underway in Denver, and the opening kick from Jason Elam goes through the back of the end zone. It's actually Todd Sauerbrunn kicking it for a touchback, and out comes Tom Brady and the Patriots. Getting just started here in Denver. Tom Ashworth, former Colorado Buffalo on that right side. One of his teammates up the road in Boulder was Daniel Graham coming off his career game at Atlanta last week, 119 yards receiving and a touchdown. Patrick Pass starts the game in the backfield, not Corey Dillon. It's Brady right across to the big tight end. No, that's actually Al Wilson on the hit, and that's Patrick Pass. Was the receiver four yard gain and let's meet the Denver Broncos defense with 11 takeaways on the season. There's Courtney Brown. Four former Browns on that defensive front. Ian Gold saved the win last week against Washington deflecting Brunel's two point try at the end that would have tied it. And Champ Bailey having missed the last two is back today recovering from a hamstring injury. It's pass diving ahead to the 26. Third and four coming up. Phil, how do you see it when New England has possession? Well, when I look at this New England Patriots team, what they've done in the past few weeks, Denver, tough to run the football on, so it's all about the pass. And the Denver defense, they give a lot of credit to Tom Brady and the receivers. They say, John Lynch said, I know they're going to catch passes. We just got to make sure they catch it, and we're there to tackle them and not give them those extra yards. There's Corey Dillon with a foot injury. Active, but not starting. Coming off his first 100-yard performance of the season at Atlanta. Third down and four. Brady flings it. First down catch made by David Givens. That's now 22 consecutive third down catches by Givens that have gone for a first. Deion Branch to one side. If he's single, Tom Brady will go to Deion Branch. But if he's not single, double coverage... That means his other main target, David Gibbons to the other side, is one-on-one, -on -one, and he is a talented receiver. Tom Brady has a lot of confidence in Deion Branch and David Gibbons. They know about Gibbons around here. Last time the, the uh, Patriots played here, he won it with a touchdown catch in the last minute. It's over to Branch, who outbattled the defender. Darren Williams for that reception and a gain of nine. Let's go back just to what we said. It's about to pass. This New England team, Tom Brady, is throwing the football better than anybody in the league. I, I kind of brought it up to Mike Shanahan, and he agreed. He is really on target, and he told us last night what is so great that when I go back there to throw, somebody gets open for me almost every single play. That's Amos Zaraway now in the backfield. So they start with pass in the backfield instead of them. And now they bring in Amos Zaraway, signed just a couple of weeks ago as a free agent. Here's his first carry as a Patriot. And it nets three yards. Run the football just enough if you're the New England Patriots to keep that defense honest. Make them at least honor the run. Talking about this Denver defense, talking to Mike Shanahan and the players, they want to be patient stay back because they know and if you follow the Patriots I know Patriots fans have but everybody else if you crowd the line of scrimmage Tom Brady is going deep they have been throwing the football down the field exceptionally well so far this year it's back to Zaraway who bounces outside and fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage as Darren Williams the rookie hit him first Michael Myers also in on that no gain you know, last week we talked about throwing the football well. Look at some of the numbers. His start down there, the completion percentage, his second best of his career, seventh, first in yards of attempt. The long pass plays, boy, that's what really sticks out. What a change in Tom Brady's career. A short throw the first couple years, they weren't that good. Now they're greedy, they're aggressive, and they do it well. It's second and ten. Throws it over in the flat and scoop right off the top of the surface. It's Givens with his second catch, but only for a yard. Third and nine on the way. Well, that was a blitz by this Denver defense. They know they got to be careful with the blitzes. If you're not, they will get burned. 
and they worked as we watched practice on Friday. Um, but Bradley Van Pelt was imitating Tom Brady. A lot of short throws to the outside, so they look for him to take a chance later in the game to try to intercept one of those short throws. Patrick Pass returns on third and nine, four receivers. Troy Brown is inactive today. Brady. And that one, one hops in the area of Branch. His first in completion. And the Patriots are forced to punt. Courtney Brown applied the pressure on Brady. Big key for this Denver defense. Can the front four pressure Tom Brady? Courtney Brown to the top of the screen. Just pushes the pile and the bottom of the screen. That's what they do well. Jim, you talked about it from Cleveland, number 98. Back in, trying to get back in the game shape. He is a huge key for the Denver defense. Talking about Courtney Brown, who missed almost all of last season. Injured week two when he was at Cleveland and IR'd. And also off to a slow start with injury at the beginning of this season. Look at Miller's kick. It lands inside the one and bounces straight in the air. And Holly Banta Kane is able to down it with his new number and all going from 48 to 95. There is a flag on the field. What a beautiful effort by Josh Miller. 48 yard punt. One thing I do notice, Jim. After the play was over, personal foul, number 40 of the return team. Half the distance to the goal, Denver's ball, first down. Called on Cox of Denver. And what a start. Here it is. Jake Plummer and the Broncos will begin at the one when we come back. We welcome you back to the Mile High City. Jim Nance, Phil Sims, and Bonnie Bernstein as the Broncos with their first possession starting just outside of the one. And here's the handoff to Anderson, Roosevelt, Colvin, and others in on that hit as New England shows a four-man front. On that first snap, there's Jake Plummer. Ninth year in the league, but the first time he's ever gone against New England. On that line, Tom Nalen, the longtime veteran, is from originally Foxborough, Massachusetts. And it's a two-back set. They'll alternate Mike Anderson and Tatum Bell. It's Anderson who had the first carry. Anderson and Bell have each had a 100-yard performance in the last two weeks. So on second down, it's back to Mike Anderson, and he has backed up a yard. Hit by Ty Warren. His Patriot defense has not been forcing takeaways. They've gone, in fact, 10 quarters without a takeaway. Jarvis Green is in for Richard Seymour, who's out for a second straight game with a knee. Mike Rabel has the only interception of the year for New England. Hard to believe. Not a single one out of the secondary, which is patchwork again today, is Scott is inactive, and James Sanders, a rookie from Fresno, becomes the third different strong safety of the year. With Harrison and then Scott, and now Sanders. Third down, set up the pass over to Tatum Bell, who dances out of the end zone, out to the seven, and they'll have to punt out of the end zone. Chad Brown wrapping him up. Good job by this New England defense. It's We come to the game when we do the Patriots, and we go, well, let's see who starts. That time, they had Mike Vrabel inside, along with Chad Brown, Monty Beisel was out, Willie McGinnis on the outside, and Roosevelt Colvin. So a little change for the defense because of injuries on the Patriots side. So Tim Dwight back at his own 40, and Todd Sauerbrunn will punt. Number one in the AFC, playing average 27 yards per boot. This one angled to the side, Dwight has a chance to run with it. And he inches across midfield. There is a flag. You can log on to NFL.com every Tuesday for Vic Perucci's power poll. He'll rank the top teams in the league. This year, the field, of course, wide open. So you can see who Vic Perucci ranks and how he has them all stacked up at NFL.com. Vic Perucci. Couldn't quite get it going that time. I tried. Trying to roll the R? Yeah, I couldn't get it rolling. Perucci. Perucci. There you go. Illegal formation on the kicking team number 37 was not on the line of scrimmage. That five-yard penalty will be assessed from the end of the run. First down for New England. 
where they'll put them inside the 45. Shanahan and Belichick meeting again. I'd like to welcome those of you who saw Tampa defeat Miami today. Jim Nance, Bill Sims, Bonnie Bernstein in Denver as the Patriots are about to start their second series of the game. Picked up a couple of first downs the first time they had it. Punted it down inside of the five. Denver had it three and out. And now here we go with the Patriots' second possession. Amos Saraway is in the backfield. Corey Dillon has not been in in the early going with a flag down at the Neon Ranch for a first at the 30. He escaped John Lynch. Offside, 93, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. The penalty declined. The play results in... First down. Yeah, so Branch has his second catch here in the early going. That one called on Price. Well, you know, you do not see that call too often. I was watching games, uh, the 1 o'clock games, waiting for this one to start, and I see it constantly. Defensive linemen lined up in the neutral zone, and it's never called. So Trevor Price, he knows the standard's been set. you got to back up now. First down, Patriots from the 30. Zero away who led the Raiders last year in rushing with only about 400 yards. That was the top back for the Raiders in 2004. They did not bring it back to camp this year. And then just kind of sitting out, did not go through training camp with any team. He was signed as a free agent on September the 28th. Also back in 2002, Zeroway had been the top rusher for the Pittsburgh Steelers. As Corey Dillon continues to watch, coach's decision is what we're hearing from the Patriots sideline. Dylan was nicked last week in the win over Atlanta, and he ran hard a week ago. Zero away. Gets another call. And down after a two yard game. We've got an update, so let's send you to New York and back to Greg Gumbel. All right, Jim and Phil in Buffalo, just as he did last week. Kelly Holcomb directs the Bills to a touchdown on his first drive. This is to Jonathan Smith, eight yards, a touchdown, 7 0 Bills, first quarter. Jonathan Smith backing up. They're waiting for the room to clear. Thank you, Greg. Look forward to those updates today. And there's the AFC East with the Bills and Jets tangling today at 2-3, and three, a game back of New England entering the play today. Bethel Johnson has come into the lineup. Patrick Pass in the backfield. Third down and six. With another flag down, cross the body. Brady throws it incomplete. He's looking for Givens. We'll check the flag. Offsides again by the Denver defense. Offside, 61, defense, five-yard penalty, still third down. It's not enough for the first. They'll have a yard to go, third down and one. Oh, he just, Gerard Warren, number 61, little jump before the snap. Denver, third downs, very creative. Tom Brady says, I think his words were, man, this defense is crazy. And so that's tough to get ready for because you got to think about, well, how do they view us? What will they do today? Will they play us like they did the Washington Redskins? No, they won't, Tom. They're going to do everything to try to keep you off balance just a little. There's Larry Corey, the defensive coordinator. You know, this is a spot right here where you really miss the presence of Corey Dillon if you're New England getting that one tough yard so uh, unstoppable in goal line situations and yes you know you know Jim but this week Corey Dillon it, it, remember the Patriots have next week off so that makes coaches sometimes err on the safe side because they know if they can get through the game they don't have to use him it was this week now he gets the week off and then he, they can even give him a few days the following week to get back to being hundred percent well, Belichick had asked for a measurement, which is his right. Mm -hmm. He had come out of the field a few steps, and it's not even close. But this third and one from the 22. This is only the third time this season 
that the Denver opponent has started a drive inside Denver territory. Twice in the first five weeks was fewest in the league. Mike Shanahan complained to the official because what it does, it gives Bill Belichick and his coaching staff more time to decide what they're going to run in this situation. And he's going, hey, come on. You know it's not a first down. Don't give him that extra time to make a decision. They bring in Klecko as the fullback. They'll go with pass. And Patrick pass. Looks like he is stopped short by a half yard. Boy, it looked like the pile was moved. And he should have fallen forward for the first down. And if it's short, they're going to go for it anyway. I always just watch the lead blocker. Watch Kleck. Klecko got a, a hat on Darren Williams, a mismatch in size. And now they Would have followed the fullback a little more, which was Klecko, because outside there was an easy first down. They're going to bring out Amos Zeraway, and the offensive unit stays in. Absolutely. These situations, not much to think about. You know you have to go for it. That pass also in the huddle. So the only two healthy running backs for New England are in on this play. Fourth in less than a yard. Let's see if they go a little misdirection. Well, <laughs> a major shift. It's passed to the right, zero away to the left. Brady just going to try to draw him off. He takes the timeout with 10 seconds on the play clock. And we'll take the timeout with him here in Denver. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 40. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And by the all-new Civic from Honda. It'll reverse your thinking. Well, we're back here in Denver. There you see the percentages for Adam Vinatieri. You know One perfect line. 39-yard try for Adam Vinatieri. He's had two game-winning, their last two road games, in fact, have been clinched by Vinatieri at the end. And Vinatieri right down the middle for the first three of the game. It's the first time the Broncos have trailed in their last four. They have won four straight coming in, but the first points to the Pats. Well, there you see Denver has been playing from a very favorable position, to say the least, the last four games. It's a team that opened up with an awful performance at Miami week one, only to back it up with wins against San Diego, Kansas City, Jacksonville, and Washington a week ago. You know, I look at this game, Jim. I see a lot of positives for the Denver Broncos. They're not turning the football over. They've been running it well. New England's on an unbelievably tough stretch. As usual, they're beat up. They have injuries. They're traveling one more time. And, and we say it. We heard it this week. The excitement at the Broncos facility. Everybody looking forward to the game. How do we measure up against the world champions? And it's a recurring theme. The Patriots are here this year. And here's the kick deep. It's Williams. Got some room on that left side. But it closing in quickly. To nab him out at the 27-yard line is Don Davis. And we'll be back with the Broncos' second possession from the 27th when we continue on CBS in just a moment. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the new Sprint, the official telecommunications service sponsor of the NFL. And by Wendy's. Do great taste at a low price. Do Wendy's. Do what tastes right. We are back here in Denver, and Jake Plummer and the Broncos have been playing 
flawless football for the last 13 quarters without a turnover. On first down, it's Tatum Bell. Diving ahead for about a yard. Had a big game last week. Let's check out your spotlight here when the Broncos have it. Well, talking to Jake Plummer, Mike Shanahan, they have just prepared for everything because they say the Patriots, they play us different every time, so we don't know. The New England defense, a quilted defense. Well, what we mean is they're, they're patching it together. Mike Vrabel playing inside today. James Sanders at safety. Uh, they, they just find a different combination that somehow gets it done for them every week. Boy, did you see the big fall of Willie McGinnis, all bandaged up injured a week ago, and Plummer connects with J.F. Chubb. Puts here for the first down. Let's go back to Greg Humble for an update. Jim and Phil in Oakland. Drew Brees to a wide open. LaDainian Tomlinson, 35 yards and a touchdown. It enables LT to pull into a tie with Lenny Moore for the NFL record. At least one touchdown in 18 straight games. All right, thank you. Thank you, Greg. The Raiders off to a slumbering start. I know that Collins has already been picked off in that game, too, for the first time this season. Mike Anderson replaces Bell as they move the chain. First first down of the game earned by Denver. And there's Mike Anderson. Now to the 46, and we mentioned Bonnie Bernstein on the sidelines today. Let's check in with Bonnie. Well, Jim, you and Phil were talking about how banged up the Patriots' defense was. Bill Belichick decided after five really physical games, he gave them a break. Didn't make them practice in pads this week. Eugene Wilson, the third-year safety, gave us some what he thought was encouraging news. He said, we've had some breakdowns in communication, but I thought things went really well this week. He's put a lot of pressure on himself because he's the one calling the plays in the secondary with Rodney Harrison out. All right, Bonnie, yes, and not only Rodney Harrison, but Gus Scott as well. And it's Anderson just back to the line of scrimmage. Isabel Colvin got to him first, but another yellow marker on the field. Yeah, it looks like a hold against the Denver Broncos. But go back to what Bonnie Bernstein said. Eugene Wilson, remember, he's used to having Teddy Bruschi, Rodney Harrison make all those calls. Now all of a sudden, oh, the pressure's on him to make the right calls to pay attention even Hold more. 50, offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. So All did, that pressure you're talking about when it comes to having to really be in charge of the communication back there. Well, what it means too, Jim, and I know this, quarterbacks, uh, safeties, they have to sit, they got to pay attention all week in meetings and really grind almost like a coach because the mental pressure is, it, it's great. So, but Eugene, big smile on his face. Seems like he's enjoying the role, and he's going to have to help a guy out there today. There he is, James Sanders. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, yell out to him and tell him what to do. Because it's Sanders' first career start. Last week was his first game. He had been inactive the first portion of the season. Second and 15 after the markoff. Numbers pass. Oh, is Putsier laid out by Asante Samuel. There is a rule for quarterbacks. Know the coverage and always don't look at the receiver. See in front of him. So this play had danger marked into it the whole way. Asante Samuel lets his guy go and looks up the tight end. Well, is that a hit to the head? That's awfully close. Worth a, another examination here. Timeout on the field as puts here is on his feet we'll be right back high definition puts here seeing stars after this hit well jim you brought up a question was the hit legal absolutely asante samuel leads with his shoulder hits him in the chest and that is probably the best thing that could happen to puts here is because he hit him where it wasn't going to hurt him and it also was not going to hurt asante samuel if you go to the head he was in a defenseless position, then it would be a penalty. Third down, 15. But excellent time, and that went right through the hands of Charlie Adams. And then almost caught by Rod Smith. Charlie Adams, wide open over the middle. Jake Plummer, just a little high with the football, and probably should have been caught. And on the other side, Ashley Lee, wide open too. So the receivers... The couple times they have gone down the field, they are getting open against this New England secondary. Sauerbrunn in for the second time. Tim Dwight at the 15. Caught a couple of touchdowns as Tim Dwight. 
His career going from Atlanta to San Diego to New England. All kinds of room here for Dwight. Looking for a seam. He'll try the left side. And he's met head on at the 24. Another flag. 50 yard boot. 11 yard return. Seems like it's almost impossible to get through a kick, a without kick, a penalty. punt without, you know, it's just. Uh, well, you know, Jim, it's just too competitive. That's all it is. We're in the kick, holding 58 of the return team. 10 yard penalty, first down, New England. So that'll back up the Patriots inside of the 10. And of course, at halftime, we're going back to the guys in Studio 43 for the Sprint Halftime Report. Talking about Greg and Dan and Shannon the Boomer. And that's all coming up. Sprint Halftime Report. Patriots begin this series at the 7th. Sam Brandon has come in for Nick Ferguson, who was shaken up on the hit. Tim Dwight. Take the end round, and man is wide open. It's the on branch. They froze the defense, and a flag thrown in at the end. Might be a face mask out at the 27. 19 yards. What a play by Tom Brady. Felt the pressure, got rid of the fake. Personal foul, face mask, 22, defense. 15-yard penalty, assessed from the end of the play. First down. I tell you who's hobbling out there is Patrick Pass. It is a position you cannot afford right now to lose a player. It's right here at running back with only Pass and Zeroway looking like they're going to go. He got shaken up on picking up the blitz. Wow, and he, and he did a tremendous job doing it. But Tom Brady, good presence of mind, stepping up and making it happen. Otherwise, they could have turned into a safety. It's a 19-yard pass play, Phil, plus 15 yards on the penalty. That's the fifth penalty of the first quarter against Denver. Well, that time Denver crowded the line of scrimmage, and you can see what is going to happen when they do. Tom Brady will pick them apart to the outside if they get up there trying to stop the run. So Zeroway takes passes place. And he is met head on. No gain. Back to New York for another update from Greg. Ladanian well, Tomlinson, open season against the Raiders. This one, seven yards and a touchdown, 84 total yards for LT, and two touchdowns today. Chargers lead it 14-0. Thank you, Thank you, Greg. And take a look at the AFC West with Denver with the four straight wins coming in. Kansas City with a victory today. Chargers and Raiders, and Greg will keep us posted with scoring highlights and updates on that game. Patrick Pass sits out one play and comes right back in. Second down and 10. They set up a screen to him. Pass. Knocked out at the 50 by Al Wilson. Third and two. Maybe call it third and three coming up for the Patriots. Look what the Patriots have done. The only team with a first quarter touchdown in every single game. That's that is impressive because it is sometimes it takes a while to get it rolling. Well, you like what they do at the start of the game, and of course we know what they do at the end of the game. On offense. Brady from the gun on third and three. Hit when he throws it, pass high, intended for Gibbons. John Lynch helped break it up. Well, trying to do it, John Lynch told us the key to this game, can we pressure Tom Brady just with the big guys? And they don't hit him that time, but everybody was around him. Hard to be real accurate and throw the football down the field with velocity when everybody's around you like that. Josh Miller, first punt of the game was a beauty. It landed inside of the one and was downed at the three. See what he does now in this 
Rarefied air. Oh, is this a big one? Too much. Another flag on the special teams play. So the ball against New England. Decline it, take it at the 20, get the penalty. I'm coaching now, if you didn't know, Jim. That's what we want you to do. As they would say, I got all the answers up here on Sundays. There's Brad Seeley, the special teams coach for the Patriots. It's got to be the most frustrating job in America for all the special team coaches in the NFL. Holding, 58, kicking team, 10 yard penalty, replay fourth down. We'll replay the down. And make a punt it again. You can see why CBS is number one for the fourth year in a row. Catch the new hit comedies and dramas and all your favorites that make CBS America's most watched network. Well, I'm 0 for 2. I thought the Patriots would go for it on fourth down. Why I thought the Denver Broncos would decline the penalty, Jim, because out here in this air, punters, kickers, they can kick it farther. So even though they're on their own 39, I still expect this football to get inside the 20-yard line with ease. Well, you saw that last boot by Miller that is taken away. The touchback, he flew that all the way down inside the end zone. Well, let's see if he puts the big foot to it again. I'd say so. Yep. Williams takes it at the four. And a penalty. Going to wipe out any of this run back. Williams gets to the 20, but the flag back at the five. And, well, Coach Sims, you were right. It's going to turn out. Gosh, you, you know what? For no other reason, you got to be careful about special teams' decisions because you know penalties are coming. There are more than one on this play. I saw at least two blocking the backs. It was after a 58-yard punt. And Jim, most of all, he should not have caught the football. Illegal block in the back. 22 of the return team. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down for Denver. And you saw the rookie from Maryland, Foxworth, shaking his head. So another player shaken up. I think it's Darren Williams on the sidelines. Here comes the block, 22. Oh, that's that's pretty simple to call. I, I can't even sit there and say, oh, that's a tough call. Against Bethel Johnson. The returner, Darren Williams, still down. You know, the longer he stays down, the less chances he has of being yelled at by the coaches. <laughs> yeah, we had a Coach Parcells. You see... Players, they get hurt. Sometimes they get the breath knocked out of them. He used to tell us, if I have to go on that field, well, I won't even say it because it's not time. You keep, better really be hurt. You could only imagine. <laughs> yeah. To pass out to the 11. That's Putzier back in the game after being shaken up. Let's go back to Greg for an update. Jim and Phil in Oakland, the Raiders have cut the Chargers lead in half for four yards out. Lamont Jordan right up the middle to the end zone. 14-7 San Diego now as they start the second quarter. Well, that well that one they had to have. Thank you, Greg, after a couple of Ladani and Tomlinson touchdowns, torching them early. You can see the first two possessions for the Broncos have resulted in punts. Yeah, a lot of talk. You know, the, you're a Denver Broncos fan. You're used to seeing high-powered offense. Tatum Bell picks up the first down, and they'll move to the other end at the end of the first quarter. 3-0 New England. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Only points of the first quarter, a field goal by Adam Vinatieri. Jim Nance, Phil Sims, Bonnie Bernstein back here at Invesco Field at mile high. First down and 10 for the Broncos from the 13. To make that the 18. Plummer and tuck it under. Slides out for a gain of about five. 
Well, this Denver Broncos offense, it has not found its rhythm yet this year. When I watch them, the running game, that's the key. They haven't, not, they haven't got that going today. The passing game out of sync. And then receivers missing passes when the chance comes. You got to take advantage of it. And the Denver Broncos, it's about running the football. It's about Jake Plummer going the opposite way on play action passes. And it's about big throws down the field. They did tremendous at it last year. They have not got that going so far this year. Looking at the pass here on second down. Down the field, Rod Smith. That's the longest pass play of the season for the Broncos. And Smith is finally dragged down at the five. Jake Plummer told us all Friday that the Atlanta Falcons had these opportunities. And they threw it up the field instead of across the field. And that time, such an easy throw. He throws it way across. Watch on the outside, Rod Smith. He's got good position. Instead of up, it's across. That way, Dwayne Starks can never catch up to him. 72 yards to Rod Smith, the all-time receiver here. Can you imagine through five games, Denver did not have a pass play to a wide receiver longer than 23 yards. They just topped it by 49 with that one. That could change the makeup of this game. George Foster was slow to get up, and because the down clock was already operating and they were slow to get to the other end of the field, there's a timeout. A timeout called. Jake Plummer said, I will get lots of opportunities to throw it down the field. There was his first real chance, and they took advantage of it. But we saw this last week. Matt Schaub against his Patriots defense early in the game had a couple big chances and did not quite put the football on the, mon on the money. And it really I thought it really hurt the Atlanta Falcons. They overcame it. All right, there was no timeout charge to the Broncos. The officials saw that Foster was injured. He's been treated. Cornell Green has come in for him. And they'll have it first and goal at the five. Boy, Rod Smith looked, he looked pretty fast on that play. Pretty young, didn't he? Well, he looked young. You know, he's the possession receiver. Ashley Lee is the home run hitter. Tatum Bell is the tailback. Kyle Johnson, the fullback. There go Tatum Bell. And he gets only a yard. He scored twice a week ago against the Redskins. Two long ones he broke. It's Rod Smith. He just keeps on going undrafted just amazing think what he's done over 10,000 receiving yards in his career 60 touchdowns of course he's got all the Denver records and all the records for anyone to ever play in the league as a receiver undrafted he is a lot like Heinz Ward he's tough he blocks and he always plays with a chip on his shoulder because he figures this could be it back to Bell falls in for the touchdown Tatum Bell takes it, the final three yards, set up with a 72-yard hookup, Plummer to Smith. This time, Tatum Bell has a little more patience. He waits, he sees that little lane to the backside, he cuts back, and he goes in the end zone almost untouched. Patriots really selling out to try to stop the run, so if you wait, there could be a gap that opens up to the backside. Jason Elam in to add the extra point. Jake Plummer told us on Friday that he hoped that last week was Tatum Bell's breakout game. He's in the end zone again this week. 7-3 Denver. We are back after a 97-yard drive. This is the big play. Rod Smith all the way to the five, covering 72 yards, and Tatum Bell then takes it in from three. Sauerbrunn with the kick that will be returned by Ellis Hobbs. And Hobbs gets away from the ankle tackle. But is swarmed under at the 21.
Well, Jim, let's go look at this big play that Rod Smith gets. He's to the outside. Dwayne Starks is to his outside. So when he goes up the field, look, there's nobody in the middle. He goes across. If he'd have went up, Dwayne Starks would have run underneath him and knocked the pass down. And like we said, the fact that he kept coming across the field, that made it an easy throw and, of course, a much easier catch for Rod Smith. Patrick pass the running back. Ben Watson sent out wide to the left. Brady under heat. And a hit, a late hit call against Trevor Price. Well, the officials are getting together because they're going to see if it was intentional grounding, too. Was the pass near any receiver? If you throw a football down the field, knowing that you're going to get sacked, they can throw a flag on it. Personal foul. Trevor Price, top of the screen. Oh, boy. It's not even close. I do not see how... Oh, there it goes. Well, let me backtrack one more time. The hand, his left hand, was on his chest. It went up to the face mask. And everybody goes, well, it wasn't bad. Oh, you can't start as an official deciding, oh, that one was not too bad. This one was worse. If you put the hand up there, automatic flag. Brings it out to the 36. Zaraway with a big loss. Hit by Courtney Brown. Set back five yards. Let's get another update. Greg in New York. Jim and Phil in Buffalo. Kelly Holcomb continues to produce as the Bills' starting quarterback. This little pitching cat with Eric Moles. Good for 15 yards and a touchdown. 14-0 Bills. Eight and a half to play in the first half. Thank you, Greg. Boy, as he brought back life to the Bills, talking about Kelly Holcomb and Eric Moulds, Levens, they were nowhere when the rookie Lossman started the first four games of the season. Second down, 15, as Courtney Brown decks Zaraway for a five-yard loss. Brady dumps it over. Daniel Grimm, and he falls on the fumble. hit by Foxworth the jarred it loose this is a Denver kid coming home talking about Daniel Graham Tom Brady nobody opened down the field goes to his outlet receiver Daniel Graham was down by contact it looked like and you're right Jim we talked to him last night the big man coming home raised just south of the city his father Tom a former Bronco player back in 1972 through four. His father actually led the Broncos in tackles. He was a linebacker for two seasons. Spoke at the chapel service last night. Yes, he did. He performed the chapel service. His father, Brady, looking for Tim Dwight. And he went through his hands at the 30. John Lynch back defending. This was the old Denver play. It's moved the quarterback one way, had the receiver go to the opposite side of the field. And if Trevor Price is not all over Tom Brady, it's going to be a long completion. Tom Brady looking right. Can't quite get everything into the throw because he knows Trevor Price is going to get a hit on him if he does, if he waits any longer. Look at Lynch swat that one away. So back comes Miller. Front four for Denver doing its job. Yes, Trevor Price all over him again, down by the ankles. Courtney Brown, too. Their catch made at the 18. Derek Williams shaking up briefly, but back out there and another flag. You know, Denver already has seven penalties. During the kick, holding 53 of the return team at the distance to the goal. Let's make that eight. First down for Denver. We are just four and a half minutes into the second quarter. They've already been penalized more times today, eight times, than they have in any other game this season. But they lead 7-3, Broncos. Along CBS is sponsored by Miller.
There's good enough, and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Dockers, men, women, home, dress to live. And by the new 2006 Ford Explorer, the best Explorer ever. Well, again, the penalties already a season high. Early stages of the second quarter, eight times. Anxious and aggressive, that will lead to penalties. So time to settle down and play. Let the emotion get out of the way and perform and do what you've been practicing. Mike Anderson in the backfield as Denver for the second straight series starts inside of its own 10. Last time they took it 97 yards for a touchdown. Rolling out, it's Plummer. Wide open, he's got his target, Lee. And a first down with all kinds of room now to operate at the 28. Well, when you run the football with a little success at all, you, they've been doing a lot of runs on first down. Watch Mike Vrabel, how full they are. And out to the outside, you don't get this open in the NFL unless you are deceiving the defense, and that's what the Broncos did that time. 19 yards for Lele. That's his longest catch of the season. Tough spots, big moments. Mike Shanahan loves, so loves those deep lake passes. Oh, you got another one coming. Over the top. Plummer. Got the post pattern. Looking for Lee. Lee. He's got it inside the 20. Well, I said he just had his season long with 19. Tops it the very next snap for 56. Jake Plummer had to know it. He came out. He saw the defense rotated too much. Ashley Lee at the top of the screen just runs right down the middle. And look at the defense. They jump up. That allows Ashley Lee right down the center. Boy, keep concentration. I can't imagine what goes through a receiver's mind as he sees the football in the air for that long. And Jake Plummer, there's those big plays we talked about. Timeout called by Denver. That is twice now. Starks has been burned. And, of course, with that reworked secondary, a new strong safety. Where's the help? We're back in Denver dominating the second quarter. Look at the yardage. You know, we were talking to Jeff Plummer on Friday. He said, we have actually a play-in after looking at the films last week. Patriots game against the Falcons. We call it Atlanta. Atlanta, that's right. Atlanta ran it. They didn't hit it. They learned from it, and they hit it today in the game, and you saw the red zone, what they've done so far this year. First down, there's the carry. With Mike Anderson for four. You know, listening last night to Bill Belichick, and I asked him, do you play a lot of guys up? Does that help you against the run game? against this Denver Broncos offense. He says, no. Why it doesn't, because when you bring the extra defenders up there, they have to be looking for the bootleg passes from Jake Plummer. So you should be staying back. So that's why one of the reasons why this Denver Broncos team has good running games almost every week. Tatum Bell is in. And that quick burst that he has takes it all the way right on the first down line. Cooper Carlisle threw a good block for him. Well, it's, again, they're so good at this. Get them running left, and if people run too fast, the runners will train to see it, to stop, and cut it back. They're aggressive. Tatum Bell, Mike Anderson, and even Ron Dane. They know. Coach Shanahan will play all three. Be tough and aggressive when you run the football. They got the first. Goal to go here for the Broncos. Lumber. Passing for it. Look at the smell. Awesome. Touchdown. Denver. Got him again. Everybody playing one. One-on-one -on -one coverage. That's a lot to ask for. All these defensive backs from New England. Really well-designed play that time. What they do, they take two receivers. defensive backs to get out of each other's way and get to their receiver time to stop the touchdown. Hard to imagine what we've just seen in the last five minutes on the game clock. We've seen Denver drive at 97 and 91 yards against New England. Two touchdowns in four minutes and 44 seconds. Plummer to Smith and the Broncos are up 14 to 3. 
The NFL on CBS is sponsored by AmeriQuest Mortgage, proud sponsor of the American Dream. And by Circuit City. For the hottest new technology, think Circuit City. Just what I needed. Well, Ashley Laylee this time with the deep ball and the play that set up the second touchdown. 72 yards they went to Smith earlier, 56 to Laylee. And what a blitz here by the Broncos. Ellis Hobbs is advised by Bethel Johnson to kneel down, bring it out to the 20. This week, the late show, Dave's all new with Uma Thurman. Uma Thurman, then The Rock, and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Dave's all new all this week. Rod Smith gassing up a little bit after a pretty remarkable stretch. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mike Shanahan said, to, what did he say Friday? Hey, the big plays, they're going to come. I know it. And they do know because the way teams play them. They gamble to stop the run. That gives those wide receivers chances to go deep. That pass intended for Ben Watson. Tell you what this is starting to remind me a little bit of is last year on Halloween at Pittsburgh, when the Steelers had this flurry in the first half, and it was a game which Corey Dillon did not participate in. They had no running game with Corey on the sideline. I don't know if he'd have been a big factor today, but Jim, what did we start the game with? What did you ask me? I said, this is a tough spot for New England. The tough road going against another physical quality team. And especially after you won such an emotional victory last week, can you get up one more time? You saw Dylan, he's active for the game. Played it over to Gibbons. It'll be third and about four coming up. He is dressed. He had been questionable a week with a foot injury suffered against the Falcons last week, talking about Corey Dillon. And last night when we asked Bill Belichick, would we see Corey playing today? He said he'll be out there. Yep. He's out there. Yeah, he's there. He's standing there, chewing some gun. Yes, enough. Denver, very deep on the defensive line. They shuffle four new guys in every couple plays. Makes it tough on this New England offensive line. It's third down and four. Low snap, blitz, pass too low for Branch, and again, Brady is decked. The crowd noise makes it tough to change plays, and they have been bluffing the blitz almost every single play that's been a passing situation today. So this time they come with it, and John Lynch, it's about timing. That's all it is. Time up the snap of the quarterback, catch him off guard, and he did that time. Tom Brady gets rid of it, but it's not even close to picking up the first down. Josh Miller. He had pressure on him, too. What a punt. Big spiral. William stays away from it. Ooh, that just grazed the sideline. Rolls into the end zone. They'll down it at the 22. The Patriots have just released a statement here at the stadium regarding Teddy Bruschi. It's been talked about all day long on the NFL today. The New England Patriots, this is the statement, have been advised that Teddy Bruschi has received the unanimous, unanimous medical clearance from outside specialists in the field of stroke neurology. He has also passed multiple physical examinations by team doctors and has been cleared to resume practicing as early as this week. The Patriots organization is satisfied that Teddy has received the best medical attention possible and has been assured that he is medically cleared to resume his career. And from the 22, one last bit of that statement, as you see, Mike Anderson pick up two yards. The last part of that says Teddy and his family will make the final decision as to whether he returns to the field and begins practicing once again with the team. The Kraft family and the entire Patriots organization want only what is best for Teddy Bruschi and his family and will continue to support his decision. Well, you and I have talked about this a lot, Jim, and here's my view. There are doctors. They're the best. They got him the, him the best care in the world. They look at it. They are not going to stake their reputations, their lives, or Teddy Bruschi's future, anything, if they thought there was one single chance of something going wrong. So, Teddy Bruschi now has to make the decision. 
which I think he will, and he's going to come back and play. There's Plummer's pass thrown away as Willie McGinnis is chasing him down. You know, I always tell people, they think these doctors are always, well, they just say what the team wants them to say. Well, that couldn't be farther from the truth. Think about a doctor in the field that you just said. His education, his reputation, his life. Of course he's going to do what he feels is right in his heart. So we're expecting Bruski to comment on this in the next couple of days. And, of course, they have the bye week. I talked to Bill Belichick. We both did last night about right. this. And he looked at it strictly as a football decision. He has not had anything to do with the process up to this point. He yep. says if he comes back, we'll look at him as a football player at practice. That's right. And this time they get to Plummer. It's Klecko and McGinnis. The weak spot of this team. You look at the Denver Broncos. When they have to drop back in obvious passing situations, not a big, powerful offensive line, so they get pushed around. And this time, the New England secondary all over the receivers. Nowhere for Jake Plummer to throw the ball. First sack of the game for the Patriots. Perhaps a little momentum changer. So Sauerbrunn in for the third time. Tim Dwight at the 35. This a Titanic kick back to the 20. And by the ankles, he is hit. Keith Burns celebrates after a 66-yard punt, 10-yard return. Next Saturday on CBS Sports Spectacular, Annika Sorenstam and celebrities John O'Hurley, Kurt Russell, and Branford Marsalis tee off at the ADT Cliffs Challenge. That's next Saturday at 1 o'clock. Annika will take them on. And you can visit CBS Sports Line tonight for a complete wrap-up of all the day's action with video highlights, in-depth analysis from our team of experts only at CBSSportsLine.com. Well, can this Patriots offense, can they make a play? Can they get in a rhythm? Can they get confidence? Can they quiet the crowd? That's what they need to do. Brady gets some protection. Oh, got that one away, and they are going to give him the catch. It's Givens, and I'm sure this will be looked at. Lynch is trying to encourage the sideline to throw the red flag. Said he didn't have possession of it. Never take the word of a defender. John Lynch, it's a really nice blitz. He goes down. I'll tell you what. Well, that's not a great angle. You have to catch the football, two feet inbounds, and you've got to hold on to it once you go to the ground. Here it goes down. Does the football come out? It looks like it does move. Well, they're out measuring for the first down, and Shanahan just waiting word from the team of experts. <laughs> well, they want to keep seeing shots upstairs. I heard the crowd roar. I figured he'd already thrown the red flag. But in situations like that, the receiver, when he's got a defender on him, must catch it two feet in bounds and hold it as he goes to the ground. It looks like the football does move. There it is. It's free. Bounces back up into his hand. I his, think the feet issue, the, the, the issue on the two feet in play. They're in. Looks like he's got possession, hits the ground, and it, it wasn't a great view. Denver is challenging to really on the field of completed kick. I thought the football did come free. So Walt Coleman refereeing this game. He'll... Of course, I hope they weren't listening to me. I'm 0 for 3 today. So if they did it one more time. Well, they'll figure maybe you're due. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, here, here's where you're talking about. Oh, that's right a good there. shot. Yes, good shot. Oh, see, I looked at the bigger screen. Then look at this little small one over there. I'm going blind. They give you the big TV. I got this little thing. It's about two by three. But you've got four TVs in front of you. People only knew. I only need one. I do it off the top of my head. <laughs> you, you, you are watching our game, aren't you? Well, occasionally. That's a good line. 
Bill Belichick out here in Denver, where at one time he was an assistant coach in the Broncos organization. Back in 1978, he was a defensive assistant. Defensive coordinator back then was Joe Collier. Joe Collier, yeah, that's an interesting guy to learn a little defense from. He said he learned a great appreciation of the 3-4 with Collier, but maybe more than anything, he learned a whole lot about breaking down film, and he gave us a whole lot about how you think you know how to break down film. Well, yeah, he more involved in the thing. Learned a whole new way. The 3-4 defense, which he has specialized in his career, he'd learned it from Joe Collier, and then he hooked up with Bill Parcells, a little bit the following year and he was wow that's another way to do it so coaches are you know it's it's really kind of always fascinating to see how they formulate what they are they just steal a little bit from everybody they learn something and they put it in their own words and teach it their way well john lynch well, he was right in on the play he was convinced after reviewing the play the receiver has to maintain possession of the ball completely through the catch. The ball hit the ground, out of bounds. It's an incomplete catch. And John Lynch says, I knew it all along. And you know, when I've watched the replays, how does John Lynch know it? He's laying on the back of the receiver. Here they come down. I guess he felt like he pulled the arms and he... Yeah, he knocked it out. Yeah, His hand's out. in there on the right hand of Givens. So he felt it and knew it was immediately he singled, signaled, incomplete. Makes it second down and 10. Brady. Oh, he had a man open that time. And that was David Givens. You know, John Lynch in his second season here in Denver certainly has had a stellar career, six Pro Bowls. But one thing that maybe no one ever knew, he's in the Baseball Hall of Fame indirectly. He was the second player ever drafted by the Florida Marlins organization and actually went to Erie, Pennsylvania, threw out the first ever pitch in a Class A game, and they put his uniform in Cooperstown. Good story. He said it well. It took me six pitches to throw a strike. <laughs> so Bill Wall said, I think you've got a future in football. Tom Brady taking off on third down, and he knows where to go for that first. That's a good job by Tom Brady. Quarterbacks have to know when defense is turned and run with the wide receivers, there's nobody looking at him. Everybody down the field, look at him. Nobody sees Tom Brady, and when they finally do, it's too late. Rushes for 12, scrambles for 12, the longest run of the day for New England. Daniel Graham, oh, he sees him coming down the field running. Dominique Foxworth just throws him right out of the picture. Patrick Pass gets the edge and takes off to the 45. And another first down, running behind Logan Mankins, 15 yards. Big drive by the Patriots, trying to settle back into this game to the outside. Daniel Graham, look at that block. Anytime you see a team that runs the football well and they go outside, you need a good blocking tight end. And Jim, he said last night, blocking, I get as much enjoyment out of throwing a good block as I do catching a pass down the field. That, that tells you something about it. An unselfish and tough player. Yep, Daniel Graham. His pass for two yards. And he said, I take a lot of pride in my blocking. And the fact there are games where they don't throw to me, it's no big deal. <laughs> that's really, that was, so, that was very refreshing. It, well, it, well, you know, he's not a wide receiver. You know, that's, that might be the difference. Where you draw the line right yeah, there. Yeah, huh? wide receivers, but it's, what was his, I like his other thought. He says, when I catch the ball, what is it? I have one move. That's straight, right. Straight, straight, straight ahead. ahead. Straight ahead. You saw that last week. Though. Straight ahead. Run him over. Runaway train run for the touchdown. 45 yards against Atlanta. Now one move. Yeah, that's my one move. And the White zigging and zagging. Back to the line of scrimmage. And a loss actually of a yard. 
Let's go back down to Bonnie. You know, talking about Graham's toughness, he says, as tough as my coaches are here in New England, you should have seen the guy I had in high school. And Graham, of course, he talked about from Colorado. He went to Jefferson High. Oliver Lucas, his coach there, he said, when I was in high school, I dislocated my shoulder. I was down on the field. Coach Lucas came over to me. He said, get up, get over to the sideline and get it wrapped up. So anything Belichick throwing at him or any of his coaches, he's all prepared for that, Jim. That was a great story. He's back home. He's got some 20... Five members of his family here, old friends. Game today, back home in Denver. Third down, Brady. Boy, did he take a look at that defensive front, Trevor Price and Ebenezer Ekubon, both just pushing the pocket. That's what they need. This Denver Broncos defense. John Lynch going on the blitz. He's picked up, but people all around Tom Brady. Takes a big hit, no chance to get the completion. I tell you what, all these injuries this season of the Patriots, they better be careful. The quarterback's getting killed. Yeah, he took a he took as many big hits last week as I have ever seen him take in his career. Or games that I've done. And when you get hit a lot like that, it will that much, it wears you down over time. And Miller flies it all the way to the back line of the end zone. So only net 24 yards on the punt. Touch back out to the 20. Well, if you're looking for some big hits, the world premiere movie tonight on CBS, Walker, Texas Ranger. That's right, Chuck Norris is back. Trial by fire. Well, you know what that means, don't you? That means our producer, Lance Barrow, he's not going to dinner with you tonight. He's going to be in his room, laying there, room service, watching his man. Walker, in Texas. Right? Try to see if there's some shots from some of his hometowns back in yeah, Texas. Right. Floyd yeah. Ada and Fort Worth and all that. <laughs> Colleyville action. Hey, I recognize that place. Chuck Norris, Texas Ranger back on tonight. Walker. And Bell, oh, he trying to make a move and slip. And Colvin was right in on him. Only a gain of a yard. <laughs> Approaching the two-minute warning. With Denver putting up 14 in this quarter in a five-minute span. I'm not shocked about Denver's offense hitting the big plays. Everybody's done it. But New England's offense not able to do much against Denver's defense so far. All right, we are reaching the two-minute warning. 14-3, Denver. Now, champ Bailey, the all-pro corner who is playing today after missing two games with a hammy getting stretched out Jim Nance Phil Sims Bonnie Bernstein here in Denver you're very impressed by this Broncos defense today huh I am the defensive line they put a lot of pressure on them they said we need them to play really well they play like seven or eight of them so they got the depth but New England's offense the passing game has been clicking so well I didn't know if they could hold up today uh, especially the defensive backfield against the Patriots receivers Second down and 10. Tatum Bell, 20, and dragged down at the 10. 70 yards, Tatum Bell. Tatum Bell can... ...of what you just saw, the speed. He takes 10-yard runs and makes them into these long... Tremendous plays. Last week, he had two big ones against the Washington Redskins. They over-pursue again. He cuts it back, and not many running backs could get that much yardage. Watch the blocking inside. Oh, they catch the linebackers. They just wash him down the line of scrimmage, and Tatum Bell cuts it back. Mike Anderson comes in officially 68 yards for Bell. And Anderson, he's a straight-ahead runner. Touchdown, Broncos! You get him the speed, and then Mike Anderson. And getting in there. yards. Mike Shanahan not afraid to play any of these running backs. The Dolphin line. Oh, Ben Hamilton, good block. Kyle Johnson, what a... Blocked by the fullback down the field and tough running. That is really a tremendous com combination. You talk about what Bell does, what Anderson brings. 
Sanders, by the way, of the Patriots, is being helped off the field. Mike Shanahan says that from Tatum Bell, I only have one question. Can you do it in the fourth quarter? Can you stay healthy? That is what has really held his career back. Got to prove it. Got to prove it, says Mike Shanahan. This is actually not going to be reviewed from upstairs since we're in the last two minutes. Was a knee down before the goal line. It's going to be close. Elbow doesn't count. Looks like a touchdown. Can you imagine in this quarter, Denver has totaled 247 yards in this quarter. And it's, here's what happens. He puts, his, he puts his hand on the ground, and before it really gets down, it looks like he has crossed the goal line. Yeah, it is amazing, Jim. The big plays. You know the Patriots defense is just beat up. They used to pride themselves in not giving up the big plays. What a job by Mike Anderson holding himself up. But not giving up the big plays. The injuries, they're giving them up big plays every week now. San Diego, we saw them. We saw plenty of them last week with Matt Schaub making his first start of the year. And we've seen three huge ones so far here today. Just two weeks ago, when San Diego came into Foxborough and throttled the Patriots, Marty Schottenheimer, after the game, trying to, it, it appeared to me anyway, Schottenheimer is trying to be rather graceful about putting a 41-17 pinning on the Patriots and saying, hey, it had to catch up with them eventually. All these entries, at some point, they were going to have to pay for it. And uh, the Patriots took it as, uh, well, they, they, they were... They looked at it as, a, as inflammatory remarks. Well, you know, Tim, in, in sports, you do what you got to do to help your football team. And and what it, we talked to Bill Belichick last night. Why were you so excited after the victory in Atlanta where you've won so many like that? He goes, it was a tough week. We were beat up. We were down two touchdowns. We learned late that Michael Vick is not going to play. And to come back, he goes, it was just satisfying. And he really rewarded his guys by just saying, Hey, look, we got a lot of tough guys, and he knows the situation is tough for his football team. They have survived, Jim, regardless of what happens today. If they get it, if they lose three and three with the scheduled injuries, I, I still think that's a, quite a success for them. Oh, that's a good shot as he hits the ground. The football is across. The runner's left elbow hits. It will be first and goal from the half a yard line for Denver. So the hand and the foot, if they're on the ground, that is okay. But the fact that that elbow hit just before he crossed is what did it. That's what they're seeing. The left elbow, as he braces himself, that's all good. The body's up. The elbow hits. That's as it hits the. Was he over the line? They say no. And you can see if you're by the elbow, it's Ooh. just going to be not a cross, but doesn't break the plane. Not allow him to get his touchdown here. If you're Denver. Three plays exceeding 50 yards in this quarter alone. For the injury. So that was their second timeout prior to the play. And they're charging the Patriots for a timeout in the middle of that. Remember, Sanders was shaken up. Leaves New England with one timeout. And they've just announced that Dwayne Carswell, their former tight end who's now playing on the line, is an eligible receiver. He's already been hit. Eleven years in Denver as a tight end. He lines up on that left side.
Plummer looking, now fires, and is it a catch? Yes! What a grab! Kyle Johnson, touchdown Broncos! I think what's amazing about that play, the Patriots were not fooled. On about the six inch yard, six inches away from a touchdown, and they are not fooled by the play action fake. And what a catch by Kyle Johnson. Kyle Johnson has 14 career receptions, and now four of the 14 have gone for touchdowns. Plummer six out of seven in this quarter for 154 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Elam makes it 21-3. Final minute of the first half. to go in the half and then we'll, of course we'll be going to the sprint halftime report with Greg and Dan Shannon and Boomer. <laughs> Look at that pass by Boomer. They knocked the wind out of Greg I think. Another bad pass. Well, at least it wasn't intercepted. <laughs> Do it to one of his own teammates. They're all coming up sprint halftime report. That's always a good thing. And Greg Gumbel I watch you every week. What week it is? I've known you a long time. I've never seen you wear the same jacket, tie, shirt ever in my life. You know what that means, don't you, Jim? Getting a lot of free clothes. Yeah, you got it. That's it. Wonder what the Patriots will try to do, if anything at all. Well, I think 21 to three, they will test the waters. If it's spread it out, going to draw, try to throw a screen. He fired up, huh? Chuck Wara. Backup linebacker and special teams performer for the Broncos. Bethel Johnson. And he is down at the 22. Next week, college football on CBS. Tennessee and Alabama. Brody Croyle in the Crimson Tide. Take on Tennessee. It all starts with Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, and special guest Archie Manning on the TIAA Craft College Football today. Vernon Lundquist will be there to call it next week. Alabama and Tennessee, and congrats to our man Vern. Tuesday, a whole contingent from his hometown up uh, in the mountains here at Steamboat Springs, heading down to Houston as Vern goes into the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Oh, congratulations to Vern. That's Good honor, well deserved. Yeah, Hall of Famer in so many ways. Here we go. Patrick Pass takes the screen out across the 30. He's got an open field and cuts to the inside and whammied at the 40 by Lynch. Wow, what a play. Picked up 39 yards. 29 seconds to go, second quarter. And Coolidge gets it. 96 yards takes the lead. We got a great. DLP picture technology is here. HDTV that's so razor sharp and lifelike, you're there. Be sure your next TV has DLP technology from Texas Instruments. It doesn't get any more real than this. Adam Vinatieri. Getting ready for a possible attempt before the half. Patrick Pass is still down on the field. This is for the second time in this game. Well, after he just picked up a gain of 39, the first Patriot play exceeding 20 yards today. You know, Jim, he got hurt. His shoulder picking up a blitz.
most likely right knee or ankle. I couldn't see what they were looking at. I, I want to go back to the play, though. You know, in a situation like this, there are only two plays the Patriots are going to run. They're either going to run a draw play or they're going to throw a screen. You've got to know that as a, de a defense and not give up just a, a play so easily uh, moved down the field. The send Branch and Gibbons, the two aces to the right. In on Brady again, and he had to just get rid of it. It's Courtney Brown. I think Courtney Brown's getting back in the groove. As he said, I've been out for a year. And so he's been a little rusty, but he's so big. And he even looks big on the field. He's powerful. And, it, and, it, and I said it earlier, if this guy comes through and turns out to be the player that he was when he was healthy in Cleveland, they have got the biggest steal of the offseason in the free agent market. Free agent picked up back in March. Former first pick in the draft in 2000. Number one overall. Second down and 10. This time Brady has protection. Goes across the middle to the 35. They got to hurry to the line with no timeouts. Yep, they're definitely in range for a field goal right here. Third down and five. Brady with six seconds spikes it. And that'll bring out Vinatieri for an attempt outside of 50. You know, Jim, I think you kick it and punt it farther here than you do even when you're in a dome. Uh, the punters, they must just say, wow, I want to kick out here for a living. Yeah, ball is just absolutely flying out here today. In this thin air. And 53 yards, it appears, will be the yardage for Vinatieri. And a timeout called by Denver. It's interesting. We met with Adam just last night. Said when he goes out on the field, he never anticipates someone's going to try to ice him. He figures always I'm going to go through the mechanics as though I'm going to go right out on the field and kick it. You know, it's interesting talking to him, though, because he's so different in how he acts, how he works out with the team. You know, he runs and lifts just like a normal player. And then we asked him about his athletic career, and we found out he's a pretty dang good athlete. Yes, he is. He High school played soccer, wrestling, ran track, was a pole vaulter. And in college, he one year was a backup quarterback. Considers himself, in, in the end, a football player, not just a kicker. And I know that a lot of people like to debate about that, but yeah, he do. says that kicking kind of chose me. I didn't choose kicking. It was a way he could stay in the game. That's right. Adam Vinatieri from this yard yardage, he is a 50% kicker. And here in Denver, on this field, he's never missed. Six of six in his career. 53 yards, Vinatieri. Got a hook. Not enough. Not enough hook. There is a flag at the end of this. And there's a Bronco shaken up. John Lynch and others indicating it's going against New England. That's Ekubon slow to his feet. The teams are leaving the field. This is going to be against New England. After the play is over, we have a personal foul, number 70 of the offense. That penalty is disregarded, and he is disqualified from the game. That is the left guard, Logan Mankins. The starting left guard is disqualified from the game for the second half. Their first round pick is kicked out of the game. And Brady already having a tough time with protection today. There he is. Oh, it looked like he threw a punch. 
Go down to Bonnie. Well, Jim, Mike Shanahan finally got some of those big plays on offense you were hoping to get. What did you see in New England's defense you could take advantage of? Well, we just executed. We made a couple big plays. Jake made a couple good throws. Ashley and Rod came down with the ball, and you got to keep a defense like this off balance. Hopefully, we can keep on doing it. Coach, thanks. That's the end of the first half with the score. Denver 21, New England 3. We'll be back with the Sprint Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. New England kicking to Denver. And again, this game available in HD. The Patriots will go the second half without their starting left guard, Logan Mankins disqualified for fighting right on the last play of the first half the field goal try from 53 yards a little pooch kick by Vinatieri and it's fielded and a kneel down by the Broncos by Engelberger here's the play we talked about and it's Mankins with Ecuban and they said you know what not only is there a penalty but you're out of the game, and I think there's no need for us to demonstrate that move at all. Do <laughs> I mean, well, thankfully, not, thank heavens. Not on me, but just add to the list. Another well, guy out, another thing to try to overcome the Patriots. This is going to be tough for them. You know, they got to dig deep inside, and somebody, and usually you turn games around like this on the defensive side. Somebody on the defense has got to make a big play to get them going. From the 26. Little screen to Tatum Bell. Tiptoeing around a lot of defenders and nifty run out to the 38. For a first down again of 12, right behind Cooper Carlisle. Here's your fantasy notebook from the first half. And Brady, he had, again, very little time to work with. Was not sacked. How about that? But he was decked after many of those attempts. Dylan, again, suited up but not playing. Bell, 89 yards and a touchdown. Smith with a score, including 172-yarder that set up a touchdown run by Tatum Bell. First down, it's Tatum again. Look at this move. In the New England territory to the 42. Back-to-back -back plays to open the second half with Bell. The screen for 12, the running play for 19, and he's over 100. Now the Patriots, they can't feel sorry for themselves just because they're down. It's another tough road game. Somebody, you got to find a way to keep playing hard and because I can promise you the Denver Broncos, they're not going to slow down. They're going to keep coming after this beat-up New England defense. Darius Watts is in as a receiver in the slot to the right. And he'll keep on riding Tatum Bell, and this time, no gain. But what a week he had against Washington last Sunday. What a game it was. 12 carries, 127 yards, scored on a fourth down play. Touchdown runs of 34 and 55 yards. And that was really all that this team had going for itself last week on offense. If they don't have the long runs by Tatum Bell, uh, of course, they're not going to win because they could not throw the ball. Jake Plummer struggled in the rain against the Washington Redskins. Arturo Freeman just signed this week by New England is in on defense number 25. Plummer might try to take advantage. Lee had it slip right through his hands. And Eugene Wilson almost had the first pick of the year by the New England secondary. The team overall, again, has only one. That says a lot about no pass rush. Not covering guys close enough. Jake Plummer just too much on the football. Receiver wide open over the middle. They crossed him again, and that seems to be very difficult for the Patriots to handle when those receivers cross from the outside. There you see Eugene Wilson, and again, James Sanders was shaken up at the end of the first half. He was starting for the first time in his career, the rookie from Fresno State, and he's out, and now they've got an Arturo Freeman. Third down. Wide open. It's Rod Smith. To the 20. Randall Gay active this week. And William McGinnis. Gay brought him down at the 20. 
Well, when you play man-to-man -man coverage, when you run across the field, that's the hardest route for a defensive back to cover. Short and across because you have to fight through the traffic to cover the wide receiver. Willie McGinnis, number 55, bottom of your screen, gets poked in the eye, it looks like, by George Foster. And George Foster was out for a few plays in that first half with a leg injury, but as you see, has returned. So McGinnis. Well, look at Willie McGinnis, that right hand. Him and Monty Baisel, both. Fingers taped up. Can't imagine how hard it is to play because you're an outside linebacker or a defensive player. You like to grab the jersey of the offensive player and throw them around. So that kind of takes it out of the equation. Remember last year and all the changes in the secondary for New England? Well, it's, the script is being rewritten again this year with Rodney Harrison out. And there's a man just signed this week, Arturo Freeman. Gus Scott out today. James Sanders injured in this game. First down carry. Mickey Anderson. Wow. Written down near the first down. Chad Brown and Roosevelt Colvin had a shot at him. When you watch this Broncos offense, when these running backs run, the blocking is pretty good up front. It at least gives him a chance. But it's about power. And it's about running tough. I said it earlier. They have three running backs. Mike Shanahan's willing to play them all. So it's a competitive situation. So you better get in there and you better fight for a few extra yards because you don't know when your next opportunity is going to come. Denver driving right out of the locker room. Picking up just like they played the second quarter. And that's Anderson inching it across inside the 10. So McGinnis coming right back. Well, look what the Patriots defense, the comparison. The last two games to today, the last two games, they gave up a lot of yards. Wow, they're on some pace, points allowed. And the big one, here it is. No takeaways. Last year, they, they, they would bend, but they didn't break. They got a lot of takeaways. They're doing neither this year. Fake and throw to the end zone. Nope, outside the end zone, it's Lee Lee with the catch at the two. It just can't mesh as a unit with all these changes, it appears, on a consistent basis. It's hard to play when you're not even sure of the name of the guy that's lined up next to you. Well, that's true, because you do need communication. You learn to work with each other. Look at Steven Alexander, the tight end coming across. Nobody covered him. They're fortunate there was a little pressure on Jake Plummer, or there was a walk-in touchdown to the tight end. Starks, he's had a tough go of it today, but again, that secondary has been all reworked. Not a lot of help back there for him. Third down, they can get the first inside the one. They get the touchdown instead with Mike Anderson. And a salute by the former Marine. This good, tough running up the front. Kyle Jackson leads the way. Tom Naylor, number 66, the center. Bum Foxborough, like you said, Jim. And well, it's good for Anderson. He had one taken away off a of review in the first half. And now the Broncos have four touchdowns by four different players. It's getting ugly here. 28-3, Denver. It was another similar type play to Ashley Lately. Mike Anderson running hard. And Tatum Bell, every time he touches it, you hold your breath. A little bit like Reggie Bush. That's the truth. Yes. Again, Hobbs thought about it and was advised by Bethel Johnson to forget about it. 
So we'll see what Brady and the Patriots have for the second half. They'll have the football for the first time at the 20 when we come back to the Mile High City. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 40. Direct TV, NFL Sunday ticket only from Direct TV. And by the all new 2006 Jeep Commander. It's your world. Take command. Back in Denver tonight on 60 Minutes, Bill Romanowski. Romo spent a large chunk of his career playing for the Broncos. And his story tonight on America's Most Watched Network on 60 Minutes. Patrick Pass will come out running, and that about pass shaken up on that first half a couple of times. He's still in the lineup. Let's go back down to Bonnie. Well, Jim, the Patriots are in kind of a delicate situation with their running backs right now. They only had 19 yards rushing in the first half. Patrick Pass was out there on the last play, but suffered a right knee injury at the tail end of the first half. Now, the other back they have is Amos Zeraway. They signed him at the end of September. He's just learning the offense. Corey Dillon is dressed, but Bill Belichick decided not to play him because, as he told me, he can't go. Second down, Brady. Fires yeah. over for Watson. What a breakup. Well played by the Broncos. Cox with the tip away. Yeah, Tom Brady, really good throw to the outside. Jerome Cox just comes right underneath. And, you know, Bonnie Bernstein says, you know, what a situation they're in with their running backs. And, Jim, you and I talked about it at halftime. Tom Brady. Took some big hits in the first half. You got to be careful. You just can't let him stand back there and get beat up. Look at the total yards in the first quarter. Since then, they barely matched what they did in the first quarter. They brought in, by the way, Russ Hochstein to take the place of Mankins. And again, Brady hit after the release. That was a big hit. He never saw it coming that time. Gets right up to Tom Brady. The one thing about him. Garrett Williams, they're bringing a strong side blitz. This is a little uncommon. Usually it comes from the other side of the quarterback. It's caught Tom Brady, I think, twice today. Not seen him come, but Brady stays relaxed when he throws the football. That's why he has arm strength, and that's why he can absorb, absorb hits like that one from Darren Williams. He's hit only three of his last 13 passes. Darren Williams, boy, you, you can see rookie. Could be a playmaker. And the flags are thrown before the boot. Delay of the game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. That ball by Miller, by the way, he went ahead and released it anyway. Ended up in the end zone. He'll be asking for the trade right after the game. <laughs> yes. What do I got to? It what is. do I have to do to play for the Broncos? I, I never have seen a punter have a bad day out here. That would would have been 79 yards. Of course, no reason to field it back there, but it's just a fun exercise nonetheless. How far can I throw it? How far can I punt it? Let's see what he can do for real. He's already in corks and big ones. This one can be returned. Another flag thrown. And Williams steps out at the 36. I really don't know if we had a kick today where there wasn't a penalty. I think there's nothing that slows the game down. Everybody's so concerned about how long does a game take, three hours, five minutes, etc. The special teams infractions slow it down more than any single element. During the return, during the kick, holding 41 of the return team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Of course, what can you do about it? It is a penalty. Tom Brady again, it's been so frustrating for him. No time to operate. His team's down 28 to 3. Touchdowns for the Broncos, four of the last five times they've had it. And they come out at the 16 after the penalty. 
to Tatum Bell. And he adds four to his total. We've got an update, so let's send you right to New York. Greg Gumble. Jim and Phil in Oakland. The Raiders trying to stay within shouting distance of the Chargers. Lamont Jordan, his second touchdown of the day. This one from a yard out. The Charger lead is 27-14 as they start the fourth in Oakland. All right, thank you, Greg. And in that first half, we understand that Randy Moss a little shaken up and limited in action today. But uh, the Chargers have really been moving it on the Raiders today. Bouncing back to Oakland with that touchdown. Here's second and six. And another two for Bell. Let's send it right back across the country to Greg. Jim and Phil, this will make old quarterbacks feel good. Off of Mark Brown interception, Vinny Testaverde, a one-yard touchdown sneak. Buffalo's lead over the Jets is now 24-17 as they start the fourth. All right, all right, a good one going there. Thank you, Greg. And Curtis Martin over 100 today for the Jets in that game. Everybody runs it on the Bills so far this year. And another player shaken up. And it looks like Mike Wright, backup defensive lineman for New England. And helmets hitting with Mike Wright. We'll be right back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Guinness Draft Stout. Drink responsibly. Brilliant. And by Cisco. Changing the way people work, live, play, and learn. Innovation. Powered by Cisco. We are back here in Denver. Bonnie Beisel and Mike Wright. Helmets colliding and Wright knocked out momentarily and uh, on the bench now for New England. Mike Anderson in the backfield for Denver on third down and five. Deflected and that was in the area of Wolford. Wolford. No, it's not that close to an interception, but Colvin with the tip. Looks like Roosevelt Colvin. Good job. Short drop by the quarterback. Read what they're doing. Jump up there. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. New England all over the short routes. Nobody was going to pick up the first down that time. So this time the Broncos stall. Three plays and out. It's in Sauerbrunn. Hunted against New England. He was with Carolina. Super Bowl 38 down in Houston. And Dwight, fair catch, 28-yard line. Tomorrow on CBS is all new, beginning with TV's best lineup of comedies, The King of Queens, the new hit, How I Met Your Mother, Two and a Half Men, Out of Practice, and then Monday's number one show, CSI Miami, plus The Late Show, David Letterman, all right here on the top network in the nation. 52-yard punt, and hallelujah, no flags on the punt. <laughs> Look at the possessions on the New England side. Yeah, this is this another good chance. New England, the game kind of stalled there a little bit. Now they have a chance to maybe recapture something on offense. Big drive for them. They need to go down the field and score. Play action, setting up the screen, and pass got held up briefly. In fact, it might be a hold call against the Broncos. He got tangled up talking about pass with Dimitrin Veal. Number 97. Nothing coming easy, though. Holding. 97. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. And again, we talked about Mankins getting ejected from the game at the end of the first half. They've had to go rework and already reworked left side of the line that's missing Matt Light and there is Hochstein who comes in Kasher the rookie has been playing the last three weeks and look at the way now they line him up Hochstein steps in at right guard Kasher stays out of left guard the left tackle is Kasher and that pass only a couple No real ground game to speak of today for New England. They had the 12-yard scramble by Brady. 35 total rush yards today for New England. Well, you have no ground game, and pass protection has been uh, very spotty. And the wide receivers 
uh, not having their best days, not getting away from the defensive backs of the Denver Broncos. Second down and eight. Oh, and another quick hit as they tried to find Tim Dwight. It was Foxworth breaking it up. Dominique Foxworth, Darren Williams, Carl Pema, three rookies, the three high draft picks for the Denver Broncos. All of them confident, especially, especially Dominique Foxworth and Darren Williams. We talked to Darren Williams and he says, you know, I was confident. I came to Denver, went through my first mini camp. He goes, I reevaluated. I said, wow, I can, I can play up in this place and maybe even make it a contribution in the first year. And that's what he's done, now starting. Third and eight. Brady launches, looking for Dwight, has it, and shakes free inside the 20 and down at the 17. Sam Brandon brought him down. Might add, Foxworth broke up that last pass play. Champ Bailey, we saw him getting stretched out in the second quarter. Back into action after two weeks out with a hamstring. He is not in the game, has not returned. So there you see Foxworth 22. It's just a good read by Tom Brady. You saw John Lynch goes up to look for another receiver. Tom Brady just throws it over the top. And it's a really good throw because he knows once again when he throws it, he's going to the ground with another hit. There you see it with our CBS stat tracks. 49 yards for Tim Dwight. Brady. Trying to go right back to him, and that one broken up by Lenny Walls. Lenny Walls, I tell you what now, you got Champ Bailey, then you got your second round pick, Darren Williams, on the other side right now. But when you need a third corner, this Lenny Walls, he's tall, he knows how to play. And what I like about him, he's not afraid to take a chance. And when it's in the air, he can make the play on the football. So many corners now in the NFL. They can be all over the receiver, but the receiver always catches it. Lenny Walls is not one of them. Three tight ends in for the Patriots, but a flag before the snap. A whistle of death. This is the deepest penetration of the day for New right, England. The ball being snapped. Full start, 88. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still second down. Christian Farrier, who had come in along with Watson and Graham, the three tight ends set. The name is Zeroway with his first action of the second half. Sent out of the backfield on second and 15. Timber looked like a little jumpy, but they got back. Gibbons, just a couple. What was interesting, too, is I watched Tom Brady on that play, how long he took, how composed he was. Mike Shanahan says, you know, I watched him win his first Super Bowl, and I went, he was okay. Yeah. You know, the last drive, that was the only thing he thought he did the whole day. The second Super Bowl, I go, wow, he's gotten a lot better. Then at the last two, he goes, man, this guy is special. And he really just couldn't get over how well Tom Brady has thrown the football this year. So that third Super Bowl, wow, that's all he could say. Third and 13. Coming in on him, has to release it. Warren, Gerard Warren, right through, didn't he? How about Gerard Warren? Cleveland doesn't want him. You hear all this stuff about him on the inside, that he's a bad guy. He comes to Denver. Mike Shanahan sits him down and says, look, it's over. New start right here. I don't care what they say. When you're going to come to this team, we're going to do drills. We're going to run sprints. I want you to be the first every single time. And he's done it, and he's made him a leader on the football team because he gave him those responsibilities. 38-yard try for Adam Vinatieri. And he gets the second field goal of the day for New England. Still 28-6 inside. Six minutes to go, third quarter. Patriots put three on the board, but still getting swamped here. 28-6.
And you want to know why they kicked the field goal? Because it's three scores. 22 points, somewhere you go for two. That's why you go ahead and get that on the board. Charlie Adams stands back at the goal line for the Broncos, trying to win for the fifth week in a row. And Adams wisely takes a knee out to the 20 for Jake Plummer, who is having quite a day of it here. No interceptions now in his last 100 passes. Well, when you look at Jake Plummer, you talk about what he does so well. He throws on the run as good as anybody in the league. So Mike Shanahan, hey, he's a good coach. Let's do what he does best. So they move him around and give him a chance to find the guys down the field. He's thrown a couple of touchdowns today. He's eight yards away from 25,000 passing yards in his career. And that's near a perfect passer rating, 158.3 being perfect. He's so scrutinized, it's really incredible. Pass underneath the coverage to the 25 to Steven Alexander. But the perception around the, you know, everywhere, it's so negative. And, and you know, I'm not saying anything bad. But our pregame show, every week we say, well, let's keep an eye on Jake Plummer. See if he can not make a mistake, and uh, that, that's that's what people think of him. And since he's come to Denver, maybe if he'd have started here in Denver, he wouldn't be thinking that way. Because sometimes the system you run, the players you play with, and mainly the coaches, can they get the best out of your talent? That's what determines what you are. Second down and a gain of two, a third and three on the way. You saw the 27 touchdown passes last year by Plummer. That uh, tied. The team record here tied a John Elway record, but moreover, he threw for almost 4,100 yards in that season a year ago, most in Denver history. Of course, to go along with the 27 touchdowns were 20 pass interceptions, but that has not been the story this year. In fact, that is quite a remarkable turnaround. He's going now on 16 quarters without throwing a pick. Well, last year when he threw them, he threw them in bunches. Tatum Bell will erase some of the yardage gained earlier as Mike Rabel makes a nice play. And that'll bring out the punting unit. You saw Steven Alexander hobble off before that snap. Denver Broncos just looking for one drive. That's what they want. One time-consuming drive to end the game. They didn't do it last time. They missed it again this time. So the Patriots, they got to say, hey, one more shot. No, they have not picked up a first down on those last two possessions. So Tim Dwight, who set up the field goal with a 49-yard catch, is back with all kinds of thoughts of trying to break one here on the return, which he's done a number of times. Big attempt made on the block by Vanta Kane. And out to the 27. Actually, that was uh, pretty close to being blocked by Chad Brown. 62 yards, though, once Sauerbrunn was able to get it away. Here's the NFL.com poll. The best team in the NFC. You can vote. You can tell us. Cast your vote at NFL.com. Tampa Bay today going to 5-1. and one. Quarterback the second half by young Christopher Sims as Brian Greasy went out with an injury. I guess you want me to comment on that, don't I you? I wouldn't dare ask, but he did a fine job today. And there was a pass out to Gibbons to the 42. And that's a gain of 15. Tom Brady has, just like last week, has thrown a lot of passes with people all around him. Big hit there. Here's another one. Gerard Warren falling on him. Courtney Brown, he wants a little action. Garrett Williams on a blitz. But he's hung in there, and sometimes, if you hang in there long enough, the defensive pass rush, you get in rhythm with it, they get tired, and that's when you can start making some plays down the field. Denver is challenging the running on the field of a completed catch. Ah, they're going to challenge for the second time today what looked like initially a Givens reception. In the first half, they took away a 10-yard catch by Givens. I didn't even notice that it could be challengeable one foot down. 
is the left foot in. Let's watch it here. Right foot. Yeah, there's a graze there. Was there? I think so. I know why Mike Shanahan challenged it. It's a good challenge because the momentum has gone away from his football team. You do whatever you can do to break it. If it's call a timeout, he sees an opportunity here. Get a coach's challenge. Let's watch it again, see if we can see where the left foot hits the ground. Looking for a little sweep here across the side. Yeah, that looks like it could be. And there's certainly not enough evidence there to overturn it to say that there's clearly not contact with the left shoe and the grass. Jim, I think that'll be the deciding factor. Evidence. I've noticed you backed away from your original comment, so. About, about I'm not that, quite as sure as he, that foot did him. No, that's around. in. I, I have no doubt. I stand by the original statement. Oh, okay. It's not like you. <laughs> How's your fantasy team doing today, real quick? Oh, the oh, one on second. CBS Sports Line? Yeah, Sports Line. We're You're always talking about it. Phil Sims today, head to head. Oh, we're playing each other? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, I didn't even know that. And what's the score? I wish the folks could see this little computer you have right in front of you today. Oh, yeah, right. Celebrating with every point. Well, you know, added I to your tally. I, well, I, let's just say, like, the Patriots, the champions of a year ago, yeah. <clears throat> champion of our Guru League a Don't year ago. Don't compare yourself to Patriots. Is Lord. having a tough go of it here. Yeah. Well, it looks you know, like a Sims conquest. My man, Chris Hatchett, he's my general manager. He did another fine job today. Well, you got to take a you know a little ownership position. I know you do. I, I do. You know, I, Jim, I delegate authority. I'm not like you. I'm not, you know, overriding every little decision. <laughs> yeah. A control freak? Yeah, I'm not that's it. That's the word, yeah. <laughs> I think David Gibbons knows he's got one here. He had one taken away in the first half. After reviewing the play, the receiver got his right foot, Dan, tapped his left toe inbounds with the ball in possession. It's a completed catch at the sideline. Denver will be charged with their first team time. I think that's almost how I said it. Didn't he tap the toe? Sounded like a dance step. Yeah, what I like too, Walt Coleman's description of what he was looking for and what happened on the field. Very clear and very well done. The difference is we listened to Walt Coleman. We were listening to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I think you had it yourself. Didn't you say you were 0 for 3 today so far? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> That was right in front of Mike Shanahan. So, I mean, this was, if you're going to challenge a play, you couldn't ask for a better view of that. Right. And it's like I said, I really believe they weren't like going, hey, he didn't do it. They're looking for a way to break the rhythm of this Patriots football team right now. Well, it'll be a first down. Last challenge. A lot of challenges. If you don't call... One quarter and three minutes and 29 seconds, a challenge in its own right. Here's a challenge on Thursday, Survivor. You know, Gary Hogeboom, the old quarterback, sure. is still in this thing. And they played 10 years in the league, survived 10 years in the league with the Cowboys, Colts, and Cardinals through 49 career touchdowns. And will Hogeboom survive on Thursday night here on America's Most Watched Network? We'll have to tune in and see. Amos Zeraway back in the backfield here for New England. Way to getting better time, but no one open. So he dumps it underneath. And that's Patrick Pass. That was a key phrase as Tom Brady looked down the field. Look to the top of your screen. Two rookies passing it off. Pretty nice job. I know you think he's open. There's a safety back there waiting for the throw. If it goes in the air, John Lynch is going to run over there and knock him down and intercept it. Tom Brady pulled his late game heroics the last time he played here in Denver on a Monday night two years ago. He drove his pats down the field 58 yards and won it in the last minute hooking up with Gibbons for the winning score. And it's Gibbons Refusing to go down the first two times he's hit. Look away from Walls and Lynch. This was a very strange game. I know many of you will remember this. Trying to take the safety, they snap it. It goes off the crossbar. Hunter said, well, we didn't want that. We, we wanted the safety. And after they held Denver on the free kick in the, the series, they got the ball back, and guess what? 
Brady down the field to Givens for the win. Givens is out for this play. Bethel Johnson and Tim Dwight in. And a flag thrown on the snap. As they pancake pass at the 33. Michael Myers on the hit. This is for Tom Brady, the closest he gets to playing at home. Illegal formation on the offense. Number 82. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And when I say at home, I mean San Mateo, California. This is as close as he gets all year. So there are about 30 family members and friends, including his mother and father, Tom Sr. and Galen, his mother. One hand here in Denver Day. Coming off a week. Saw one pass deflected and picked off by Demorio Williams. Had that ball fallen incomplete, he would have had the highest passer rating last week of his career. Tom Brady knows it's a blitz. Trying to change the protection. Steps out wide of it. Fine branch. Out of bounds at the 29. You know, one of the reasons why Tom Brady knows it's a blitz, when Denver covers those inside offensive linemen, it's, a, it's almost 100%. They are going to come after the quarterback. He has a little play-action fake. Gets far removed from all the pressure and able to throw the football outside. Last two minutes, third quarter. Patriots drove it last time they had it, led to a field goal to drive it again. That's a pass with a nifty move to get free. And he has the first at the 18, running behind Ben Watson. And for those expecting to see 60 minutes, you are watching the NFL on CBS, the game between New England and Denver. Jim Nance along with Phil Sims and Bonnie Bernstein. Denver leading it here 28 to 6. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following the game, except on the West Coast. Bill Romanowski, and he has a lot to say on 60 minutes coming up. Yeah, I'm curious to see it. We interviewed Bill Romanowski over the years many, many times. I just thought I've never been around a guy that took care of himself so much, but we're going to find out there was other reasons involved. First down to 10, they float it in, bat it away. What a great play by five foot eight, Darren Williams. Darren Williams, Jim, why he makes this play. If you're going to be five foot eight, there's something you got to do then. You got to be very fast and able to react and change directions immediately. And that's what Darren Williams can do. Probably in a short burst, there's no doubt he is the fastest guy on this Denver Broncos team. At the Combine, back in February, he ran a 4-3-4, electronically timed, 40. He was disappointed. And he was the second-round pick of the Broncos. He was on New England's radar screen, but the Broncos nabbed him first. Over to Ben Watson. And a quiet day for the tight ends of New England after a prolific go of it last week against the Falcons. Yeah, it really has. And you just go back to Darren Williams in that play. When you get a drive like this, and you're losing that momentum on defense. You just, somebody do, you know, somebody make something happen. And what he did, knocking it down, he's put the Patriots now in a tough situation, third and about five. That'll be two down territory now, no doubt, for New England. I think so. Closing seconds of the quarter. Quick pass, has his man first down. That's Dion Branch again. And that'll probably close out the third. Denver adds a touchdown in the third. Patriots a field goal. 28-6 heading to the fourth. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We're starting the fourth quarter here in Denver. And the Broncos with a 28-6 lead. But New England inside the 10 as we start the fourth. Getting a little rhythm going with their offense. This uh, stretch for the Broncos of turnover-free football is quite remarkable. And not turned it over in the last three games coming in and another clean performance today. You know, their style with, you, you know, it's interesting. Their style of play should lend itself to very few turnovers. They run in the lot and they use play-action passes 
There's a low percentage plays to run for turnover. First and goal, pass it pass. Spinning and finding the end zone. For the second straight week, Patrick Pass runs it in. This time from eight yards. Well, they couldn't run it. They couldn't throw it. They couldn't protect Tom Brady. But they have found a little rhythm in the play calling. A nice trap block on the inside that time allows Patrick Pass to get down the field. Looked like a Bronco running back that time, getting some tough yards. What would you have called their run or pass? <laughs> Just can't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll let that one go. Right. Only his second career rushing touchdown is back to back. And Terry brings the total to 13, eight yards out. For the touchdown. And again, a reminder tonight on CBS 60 Minutes, an all-new cold case, and Chuck Norris returns. Walker, Texas Ranger, trial by fire. We'll premiere a movie on the CBS Sunday Night Movie. We're on America's top network. Williams lets that one go, and the plumber. And the Broncos, after two straight series without picking up a first, let's see what they can do this time. By the way, next week's a doubleheader weekend on CBS. Sunday, San Diego and Philadelphia for many of you. The Chargers traveled east a few weeks back and put a big one up against the Patriots. They'll take on the Super Bowl runner-up Eagles. Late most of the nation gets Denver and the New York Giants. It all begins with Greg Dan and Shannon Boomer. 12 noon next Sunday. The NFL today get a doubleheader day started on CBS. Just as he makes the catch is Rod Smith. That's Arturo Freeman just signed to the roster this week. That was pass interference. There's no doubt about that. Jake Plummer, they got to find. And why it's pass interference, because the left hand is on the receiver, and you can see he definitely turned him as he pulled him. Look at Jake Plummer, his career. Over 25,000 yards now with that one right there. Yep. And that also puts Smith on the day over 100. Including a touchdown. Look at that. Look at that. Starting move, and he's about a yard shy of the first, third and one. Yeah, this, this whole running back uh, by committee, which often is criticized when teams attempt to do this, and this is really a one-two punch. But if they can stay healthy all year long, I mean, it is a beautiful combination. Seeing more and more of it in the National Football League now just because of the punishment, and it's good to have two different style runners. Mike Anderson now in the lineup, one tough yard to get. I wouldn't be surprised to see a play-action pass. Both inside, second, third, effort, moving the pile, and the Patriots, the official coming in down the line. Of course, I was wrong. They try to change it up and give it to Kyle Johnson. Patriots not full, playing for the run inside, and it is. Patriots unhappy with the spot. They should be. It looked like he didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage when he was running the football. Vince Wilfork, look at the blitzers inside. They are playing for this all the way. There it is, second effort. Let's backtrack a little here. He made it. You think so? Yes. Well, he's going to challenge it. It's really tough to win these type of challenges when you're looking for a few inches. It has to be pretty evident before they'll move it back. New England is challenging the forward progress spot. Good challenge by Bill Belichick. He needs his call to keep his team going forward. They got momentum. Watch it. Does he get to the football to the line? Boy, from that replay, I'd say no. We'll take a break here in Denver. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by UPS. What can Brown do for you? LendingTree.com. When banks compete, you win. And by IBM. Become an on-demand business. IBM can help. 
We're back to still reviewing that last play. Walt Coleman looking into the monitor to see if Kyle Johnson ever got the football to the 30. Here we go. We're, we're right down the line. You really got to pay attention because there's so many bodies. But at the last second, you'll see Kyle Johnson kind of come out. And here it comes. There is the football. Oh, you so quick. But from that shot, it looks like, remember, a touchback. The football is on the nose of the 20-yard line, and it looks like it, the nose of that football hit the 30-yard line. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. The first down for Denver. New England will be charged with a first time out. And Brady got the nervous foot going. And I can't blame him. He's had linemen in his face all day long. Yeah, they get you a little twitchy. Settle down on offense, though, Jim. I really like how they've looked the last couple of drives. They've driven the last two times they've had it for a field goal and then the touchdown by pass. I think that's more of an anxiety about, well, we didn't get the reversal, so I've got to sit out for a while longer. Anxious to get back out there and resume this recent pattern of success by the offense. And, it, you know, give every the defense all the uh, attributes you want. They have done a good job. Stop Denver twice, three and outs. Almost did it this third time. Now, can you hold them here instead of letting them now get that rhythm and drive down the field on you? Brady's beard a little fuller today than normal, but nowhere near what we see with Jake Plummer. He has not shaved since the opening week loss to Miami. Talking about Plummer. And what did he say to you? He said, you know, I... The Full start, 26, offense, five-yard penalty, field first down. You know, he said it's not the beard's fault yet. And plus, Halloween's coming up, so I got to keep my options open. Well, what did he say, too? He, he was at his foundation, a charity auction this past week. They wanted to auction off shaving his beard when he said, look, I haven't lost a game since I grew it. Two ladies spoke up and offered quite a bit of money, said, don't shave it. We'll give the money for you not to. So. $1,500 to it, uh, Jake Palmer Foundation, but not to shave. But... Uh, O'Shea right there on that little run past some defenders before a gain of three. Yards are tough to come by, so that little five-yard penalty really makes it tough on the Denver Broncos. Play-action passes are not as good, but everybody knows you're probably going to throw it. And I've said in this game, they are not a very – they're just an average drop-back passing team. Second down, 12, 12 minutes left. Brady anxious to get back on the field. Needing his defense to come up with a play, and they stop Smith three yards shy, so third down three on the way. Today with his passing yardage by Plummer, 241. When you talk about total offense in stats, that's rushing and passing stats. And he's moving up the all-time Denver record book. He's moved past today, just today, past Terrell Davis and Frank Trapuca in the fourth all-time total offense, Denver history. Mike Plummer's going to call a timeout. He's going to wait till the play clock goes all the way down. All right, so timeout Denver for a third and three play. Tom Brady's been uh, away from the action here for quite a while with these challenges and timeouts, so he's staying loose on the sideline, hoping for one of the, uh, you know, ultimate rallies as, as many as he's had in his career. No one would see this one coming. Over to Tatum. Oh, and slippery fingers. On that occasion, and Brady will come back out after the punch. Watch Rod Smith. Well, we can't see him. We're just going to see Tatum Bell. How Jake Plummer found him, I don't know. Rod Smith running short across the field. Just got leveled by two defenders. Maybe that's the reason why nobody was on Tatum Bell. Shanahan 
visibly upset with that drop, which would have been, there was plenty of room there for him to pick up the first down. One of those plays in the fourth quarter, he says Taylor Bell's got to bring it in the fourth. We've got to see that. White races up to catch the short boot. Down at the 30. Welcome to Denver. Those of you who've been watching the Jets and the Bills and Buffalo wins again this week behind Kelly Holcomb. Salvage their season. They did the right thing. One and three, they were doing nothing on offense, so they put Kelly Holcomb in there now to win two in a row. Anybody that's 500 this time of the year, you're in it just like everybody else. That brings the Bills now to three and three, and unless the Patriots pull off a miracle rally, they were down 28 to three at one time. They scored 10 unanswered, but should they fail to complete the comeback, they'll be tied with the Bills, and that'll be their next opponent for New England after a bye. Brady steps up and launches. One on one, and Bethel Johnson, they say out of bounds. Lenny Walls was the one defender with him. Lenny Walls, what makes it so tough sometimes to throw over him right by Bethel Johnson just because of the height, so you don't even get that advantage. One foot in, one foot out for Bethel Johnson. Bethel Johnson, who hooked up with Brady on a deep ball last week for a touchdown at Atlanta. Tim Dwight is in on second down at 10. All out blitz. They beat it with the screen. Patrick pass. Blocker ahead. Pass cuts back center. And still on his feet to the 39. He's having a huge day for those of you just joining us. Corey Dillon dressed for the game, but in the pregame warm-ups, they decided it would just be only an emergency duty that he would go today. Well, here comes the blitz. John Lynch watching as they come up. Tom Brady and them have the perfect play on. That's why they call this screen, because they are predicting that Denver's defense is going to blitz. There's really not that many guys out there to defend the screen play and Patrick pass and good blocking down the field by the offensive line. 32 yards for pass, a career-long play, a pass play. And he's got 87 yards on the game. There's Amos Saraway with a burst for a first down. And again, Corey Dillon pick up that thought. He injured a foot last week in the game against Atlanta when he rushed for over 100 yards. And uh, he was not inactive today, but the coach deciding again with a bye coming up next week, you know, if we don't have to use him, let's not use him. And they've gone with only Patrick Pass and Amos Zeroway, the only two running backs. And Patrick Pass has come up big with a rushing touchdown and 87 yards receiving. A player down, Tim Dwight. We'll be back to Denver in a moment. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon Wireless. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. And by Bud Light. Smooth and refreshing Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. Back in Denver, Jim Nance, Bill Sims, Bonnie Bernstein. Crowd rising to their feet. First and 10, New England. From the Denver 27. Patriots were down 28 to 3 in the early stages of the third quarter. Cross him up with the run. Yeah, it's pretty clever what they did. Five wide receivers. Tom Brady goes, oh, they might blitz. Come in here and block for me. All the gestures, and it's all to fake the defense out because they knew they had the run on. Patrick Pass now with 47 yards rushing, nine attempts, and a touchdown. And 134 total yards for Pass. Second down and three from the 20. Champ Bailey has been out since the second quarter, re-aggravating his hamstring. And that's Branch driven back short of the first.
Topsworth and Gold doubled them up, but two we'll shot the flag. Two men were moving at once. Up top, they just shifted while the other receiver was moving. And the procedure penalty will back up the Patriots to the 25. And it'll be second down and eight. As Belichick has a word with Bethel Johnson. They got the big tight end, Graham. Going to slot to the right. And they'll bring him over. Brady to the end zone. Branch. Shan does not bring it down. Got his hands on it. He had separation from Derek Williams. I tell you what, when you watch this Patriots team, they come down with so many big catches. Tom Brady, that was a missile. And this was going to be a fabulous catch just because of the speed at which he, he threw it at. But Tom Brady, he thinks it's perfect. Ready to do the touchdown trap. He doesn't have to have that reaction too often when it comes to Branch or Gibbons holding on a rare miscue by Branch. It's got to be two down territory, third and eight. Pass, weaving, first down. Dwight trying to get a block for him, and he's out of bounds inside the 10. The call told you right away they knew it was two down territory. So on third and long, third and eight, they go ahead and run the football, try to catch them off guard, but also knowing if you don't get it, we'll go on fourth. Over pursuit by the Broncos defense. Everybody trying to make the play instead of just doing their job. That's what created the big cutback lane for Patrick Pass. Another 17 yards. And a goal-to-go situation. Pass has 56 yards on this drive. Big the pass back to the end zone. Gibbons and they say he pushed him. It's a touchdown. Yeah. They're they going to confer first. No signal. They will to push out. That makes an automatic touchdown. There it is. Touchdown, Gibbons and the Patriots. You don't have to get your feet down. Broncos cannot challenge it because they are out. Of challenges. And Bill Belichick, you kick the extra point now. You don't go for two yet. Up in the air. Got uh, them both down anyway. Down anyway, so it's not even a good arguing point. That's what they did so well last year, the Patriots. Play action fakes, throw the scenes up the field. We suddenly have a ball game here. Oh, you and know what? This was 28 to 3. I'd like to welcome those of you who saw the Chargers and the Raiders today with San Diego winning that one in Oakland to improve to three and three on the season, dropping the Raiders to one and four. What a comeback we're watching at the moment by New England. Just got in a moment ago, Brady to Gibbons. And now Vinatieri out to make it an eight-point game. I think it's good. David Gibbons' first touchdown of the season. 17 unanswered now by New England. Denver can't make the play to stop it on either side of the ball. That's what's going to... And now New England, they got confidence. And this is a, such a tough situation for a team to be in. How do you get it turned back on? Look at this catch. Those of you just joining us, your first look at it. Givens, he was ruled pushed out, but the repay... Shows that it was a touchdown on his own merit anyway. Both feet down. David Givens. Now when Denver comes back out on offense, the play calling, it will be aggressive now. Mike Shanahan and Gary Kubiak, they'll act like they're behind or that the score is tied and because they got to find a way to, to change the direction of this game. Still eight minutes to go. And you look at the numbers. Rushing yards, 155. Three big plays in this game, in case you just joined us, for the Denver Broncos. Two long pass plays by Jake Plummer and one long run by Tatum Bell really led to almost all their points. And all of those big plays you just mentioned 
occurred in the second quarter when the Broncos put up three touchdowns and led 21 to three at halftime. Then added another one in the early minutes of the third quarter. But the last three times they've had it, it's been three and out, three and out, one first down, and then another punt. Again, the lineup tonight on CBS, Bill Romanowski with his full story of his career and his attempts to try to be physically what he thought would make him the best football player possible. Yeah, he admits he used he used steroids. That's what he is. Cold Case and Walker, Texas Ranger. Chuck Norris back on CBS tonight on the CBS Sunday movie. 30 yards. Look what the Patriots have done in the third quarter and the fourth quarter compared to what Denver has done. Mike Anderson in the backfield now, and he moves ahead for six. Remember the last time Denver had it, they were going to pick up the first down, it appeared. A little screen pass over to Tatum Bell, and he dropped it wide open in the flat. Yeah, that, that was uh, really a game-changing drop. And the clock, you're down eight points with the Patriots, you need stops. You can afford to give them a couple first downs, but not many because if run the football, get two first downs, it'll take it down to the two-minute warning. Right back to Anderson, and he's forward for a first. He just keeps driving the legs. And that picks up not only a first, but a couple of more valuable minutes. Attitude runs by the running back, Mike Anderson, and also by the offensive line. The game is on the line. Let's go. Find a way. What are you about? They're about running the football. So when you get in a pressure situation, what do you do? You go to what you're best at, and you, that's how you got to get it done. Comes to the line with seven on the play clock. And he used most of it. First down run again. Third straight carry Anderson. And that's a gain of two. Tackled by Jarvis Green, who is in today for Richard Seymour, inactive for the second straight week with a knee. Dan Klecko, number 90, has been in at right defensive end. He just goes out. They have run the football right at him a couple times. A little undersized for a defensive lineman for the New England Patriots. Nearing the six-minute mark, second down and eight. And now Tatum Bell is back in. Bell gets the handle. And in heavy traffic, he's out to the 38. And another vital third down play on the way. Third and three, it looks like. Bell over 100 today. What do you do in situations like this? When I was a player, I never knew exactly what I wanted them to call. Do I want to pass? Do we run it? Do we catch them off guard? It's such an in-between down and distance. And really, there's almost just one way the defense can play it. They play aggressive regardless because if you're aggressive, you can stop the run. And of course, if you're aggressive, you have a chance to make the quarterback make a quick decision. Bell is the back, third down and three. Rummel, and it's a time in the pocket, the ball slipped out. Incomplete, it's ruled, no fumble. Ty Warren was right there in his face when he threw it. He wants to throw it to the tight end or the back and watches Jake Plummer looks down the field. His immediate look, there's nothing. Then it breaks open. He sees it. It's too late. The ball gets knocked down, and the defensive corner up top is coming off his guy and might have made the interception. Boy, would you have ever imagined that New England would find itself with five minutes to go with a chance to drive down the field with a touchdown and two to tie it. One possession game it is, and here's Dwight. With a running start, and a good start it'll be from the 34, and another flag. 46-yard boot, 20-yard run back. He Burns finally brought him down. So Jim, you and I were going to get ready to talk about maybe they should take Tom Brady out because they were so far down. But they scored at the end of the third quarter to kind of give them some hope. And the, de the defense for the Patriots really doing their job.
holding during the return, during the kick, 98 of the return team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, we all know this is the time of the game, too, as uh, five minutes, two seconds remain when Tom Brady not only thinks he's going to be able to do it, but the other team thinks he will as well. Brady in the clutch, 19 game winning drive. His last two road games, those brilliant down the field series against Pittsburgh and Atlanta, setting up Vinatieri with the winning kicks. But this one would be the mother of all comebacks for Brady. Well, this would be, you know, I'm not gonna say it's gonna go to the top of the list because the Super Bowls were pretty special, but away from home against such a quality opponent and where you've been dominated for most of the game. And to start the series from the seven, fires. Catch made, Branch, out at the 25 with ease. They pick up 17. I do not think you can just rush four right now and cover these receivers down the field. Deion Branch in the slot. You're Darren Williams. You've got to show respect because he's so fast, so shifty, and he is the number one guy you fear when you play this Patriots offense in the pass again. Last week, the Redskins against Denver. Outgained Denver by 190 yards and plus 17 first downs. But in the end, they came down to a two-point try, and Denver's defense knocked down the two-point try. We could be on that same kind of path today as pass. And has to find some room and very little there. Only a gain of two. And this was last week as Brunel put up big numbers in the rain and the sleet. He hit Cooley at the end. Then they went for the tie, and Gold knocked it away, preserving the Broncos' victory, their fourth win in a row. The receiver was wide open in the back of the end zone, but Ian Gold left his man and knocked the pass down. Second down and eight. Gold threatening to blitz now backs away. Pressure from the outside. Brady fires, and it's wide of David Gibbons. Foxworth with excellent coverage. Really good coverage by the secondary this time. They played a defense where the strong point of it is outside near the sidelines. So Tom Brady probably picked one of the worst spots he could pick on the field before the football. And again, if you're just joining us, Starting left guard Logan Mankins was ejected from the game at the end of the second quarter for unnecessary roughness. Hochstein has taken his position on an already reworked line for New England. Trying to protect the quarterback. Brady fires. And it is ruled a catch by Branch for a first. That's another good throw. Good protection. They're coming after Tom Brady. He stands in there cool. What's new? Dion Branch. Oh, what a nice. That's called a squirrel route. You fake the outside. You go up the field. You stop. You make them think you're going deep. And then he turns around. Tom Brady right on the money with the delivery. First down at the 38. Four minutes to go. With time. Open man and Gibbons this time. Unable to make the grab. Patrick Chuck Wara, though, at the end, was coming in on the edge. Tom Brady needs about a half a second more. He could take something off of it and just make it an easier catch for David Gibbons. It was pretty easy anyway. They crossed the receivers inside, and the defenders got mixed up. That's why David Gibbons was wide open. Sam Brandon is in at safety for Denver as Nick Ferguson was injured earlier in this game. Lynch coming in. Brady fires it away. No one in the area. And that was actually Darren Williams flying after the quarterback. I think they're going to throw a flag. Intentional grounding. Here it comes. Darren Williams was on the blitz. They love this outside blitz today, and it's worked. Tom Brady was in the pocket. 
intentional grounding, number 12 on the offense. 10 yard penalty, lost it down, third down. Of course, that's the killer, too, on the end. It is, and here's, lost why, it down. here's why it's intentional grounding. Tom Brady, here comes the blitz from the top. Nobody sees it. And when he throws the football, look at it. Nobody is up in that area. That's why it's intentional grounding. Boy, Darren Williams has had some big hits on Tom Brady. And when you throw the football from the pocket away like that to avoid the sack, that is intentional grounding. The stands are shaking. It's third down and 20. Boy, that was a timely, timely blitz by the Broncos. Rolling out, Brady fires, catch made. Now the ruling incomplete. What a hit on Branch. They converge. Three defenders come and hit Deion Branch. Al Wilson's one. Darren Williams. Oh, it's Al Wilson that really just levels him and knocks the football loose. Tom Brady tried to put everything he had on it. Darren Williams goes underneath. Al Williams, Al Wilson, knocks him over the top. They're going to punt with 3.46 to go and with two timeouts. Got to do it. Can't pick it up. Too long of a situation. Miller. Driving Adams back to the 17. Miller's had a good day of it. And he's out of bounds at the 23. Here is the scoring recap. It all started with a military field goal. But then Denver struck for the big plays. It was Bell after a long hook up to Rod Smith. Rod Smith then after a long hook up to Lee Lee, setting that one up. Plummer, one yard to Johnson. 21-3 at halftime. 28-3 shortly after the half. Anderson from two yards out. Then the Patriots put a nice drive together, resulted in a field goal. Scored the next time they had it. Patrick passed from eight yards. And then Brady to Givens. Three straight drives with a field goal, touchdown, touchdown, but this time shut down, and they punt the ball away. That's Anderson. Run him into the middle of that line for three. Looks like they're going to wait. Don't call the timeout. Make Denver make the decision here. In other words, put the pressure on Mike Shanahan. What's he going to do? Is he going to run it and maybe waste it down because it might not gain a lot of yards? Or does he take the chance, throw it, and if it's incomplete, it stops the clock? That's what the Patriots are hoping for. As we move inside of three minutes, second down and seven. Play action. Coming. Puts it Izzo had a look at him. Puts here, makes the pick move and picks up the first down. Again at 12. As Jeff Putz here made a nice cut move to get away from the hit. Yes, the Patriots not fooled. Willie McGinnis. Ty Warren all over him. But Jake Plummer acting like Tom Brady. Nice and cool. Finds Putz here. And what a move. From a guy who got hit so hard early in the game. Yeah, Putz here took a vicious hit in the first quarter from Asante Samuel, but has come back to catch three balls today. Timeout called by New England with 2.25 to go. And again, the lineup tonight on CBS, 60 minutes coming up directly after this, except for those of you on the West Coast. Cold case, all new, plus the world premiere movie. Walker, Texas Ranger, trial by fire. It's all coming up tonight on America's Most Watched Network. Mentioned the hit on Putz here in the early minutes of this game, and here's a look at it. It is a big hit. That's yeah. it. Asante Samuels coming off his guy and hits him, and let's tell you, tough. Well, tough is redundant when you talk about the NFL. Yeah, the, the weakest guy out there is a pretty tough guy. But there'd be a lot of guys that wouldn't be back in the yes, game that's after right. that, right? That's right. So 
first down and 10 coming up for Denver. 225 left. John Lynch looking on. Al Wilson. They just as soon not have to put the helmets back on today. Deion Branch. It's Anderson. Into the 42 and a three. Running into Willie McGinnis. And another timeout called. This is going to be it for New England. They'll have the two minute warning, of course, too, that can stop it. Just looking ahead here for the Broncos. Next Sunday, our doubleheader game, and Phil will be there for this one. Broncos against the Giants. That'll be tough on the road. Giants lost. Yeah, Philadelphia dip, yeah. Ooh, dipping into the NFC East. Yes, for a couple of weeks. Then they're by, and then out to Oakland, and then the Jets come in here. You know, it doesn't matter what schedule you put up there for any team in this league. You just go, oh, that's pretty tough. It, 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 there's just so much talent. The skill positions, everybody's got good running backs, receivers. So it makes it competitive and close on the field. New England going into the off week. And then Buffalo hosting Buffalo. Indianapolis at uh, playoff rematch in the last couple of years. Well, that schedule looks a, bit, a little bit better now than it did weeks ago when they had this brutal four-game stretch. All right, New England out of timeout. Second down and seven for the Broncos. They're going to fire it. Rod Smith, and he fights for the first. Huge effort. And now New England cannot stop it. Only the two-minute warning. That may have done it. Two-minute warning in Denver. Rod Smith, the old veteran, picks up the first down. Jake Plummer under pressure, crucial situation. Jarvis Green tries to knock it down. Good job by the defensive lineman. Bottom of your screen, Dwayne Starks. Big moment, you can't give the cushion. It wasn't that far away, but good, tough play call by Mike Shanahan. Good execution by Jake Plummer. In those situations, that is not an easy throw and catch. And with the Patriots out of timeouts, it's kneel down time for Plummer, who instead of just stepping back for a one-yard loss, he will put a positive yard into the stacks. They take that step back and take a one-yard loss, and they overrun you. They just go ahead and snap it and go forward. Well, what a game. Is, yep, what a game. And now the Patriots got one chance with the ball to go down the field and see if they could get a touchdown and an attempt at a two but thwarted by the Broncos. And again, the Patriots today, without a takeaway, that streak goes to 14 quarters by New England without a takeaway. And on the other side for Denver, Denver now four straight games without committing a turnover. On their way to winning their fifth straight. The executive producers of the NFL on CBS, Sean McManus and Tony Petiti. The coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS and of today's game, Lance Barrow. Barrow, Texas Ranger. And today's game directed by Mike Arnold. Associate directors, Steve Karasik, Pete Radovich Jr., broadcast associates, Andy Friedman, Steve Murphy, and technical manager, Pete Kalander, technical director, Jonas Einstein, audio supervisor, Ed Soltis. Stats provided by Ethan Cooperson, Joe Castellano, and up here in the booth, Tom Spencer with all of his assistants. Back in the studio, of course, Eric Mann, producer of the NFL Today and our senior producer of CBS Sports, director of the NFL studio, Bob Matino, coordinating producer of CBS Sports, Harold Bryant. Well, it got a lot more interesting than we thought it was going to be early in the third quarter. Remember what Mike Shanahan said? They can kind of lull you to sleep with all their injuries, and you can't fall for that. They kind of got to that point at one time. It did. Well, the Broncos are 5-1 and one and lead the AFC West. Got 60 minutes coming up. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.